Welcome everyone, we are back. It is the GG Super Millions. It's Tuesday, it is big action, big names, big prizes, over $500,000 first place today. I am going to be your host, and of course, we got a special guest. It's Mike Watson, Sir Watts, in the building. He is coming in to join us. Mike, how are you? I'm well, thanks for having me on. Should be a fun day. It, it is going to be a fun day. There's some huge, huge names here and some big prizes. $500,000 going to first today, Mike. I don't know if you had a chance to look at this final table, but I'm sure you will recognize some of these players. Is there? Uh, have you taken a look yet? Have you seen who we have? I had a quick glance. Definitely some names uh, that I recognize. A couple of the usual suspects, but uh, some new blood too. It looked like. Yeah, there's some. There's definitely some. Some guys I'm not familiar with. Every week we see some of the best, the brightest stars. We see some of the best play. And Mike, look, you're the expert. Over 16 million in lifetime earnings. I'm gonna let you call most of the action. I'll do the color. Let's dive into this final table. Let's take a look. Let's see who's gonna win 500,000. And appreciate you taking the time today. Yeah, let's do it. Get in there, guys. Let's see this final table. We're gonna have a dinner bet as usual. Mike and I, uh, we, we've been on a few dinners in our time, but today, you know, maybe make it, it's for two. We'll do a double up. We'll have some fun, and we're gonna see who is at this final table. Please, guys, the final feature table today. We play to a winner. Let's take a look at the action. All right, well, here we are, right into it. We see a couple Brazilians in there. Go ahead, Mike, tell me. Who oh, jumps out here at this final table? Who is? Who do you recognize? Who stands out as someone you've battled with a lot and, and have respect for? Uh, yeah, so I see the three of the ship leaders. We've got uh, Future of Me, who's somebody I've definitely uh, been playing with a lot more lately. Um, and then we've also got, of course, a couple of the Brazilians. We've got Pablo, we've got Pedro, definitely guys that I've played with a lot, both live and online. Um, Obviously, you know, Ola's in there, um, another Brazilian. I mean, we got a lot of uh, a lot of great players here. Yeah, there there is. And this is, of course, a massive prize pool. Super Millions, always a big prize pool. But today we see a extra, extra juicy 500,000 in first place. What, what, what do you have in mind if you're sort of a middling stack? How do you approach final tables in the sense when you see that 67,000 for ninth, 538,000 off a 10K buy-in for first? Give me a little bit of a look and strategy. Let's just take like a middling stack right now, such as Nico Soinen, who has, you know, he's got some chips, but he's a little bit on the shorter side compared to the field. Let's say like a shorter to, to middling stack, Mike. Give me a little bit of strategy on, on what you what you look at is it the is it the other stacks around you who's on your left the quality of players how do you decide on a final table strategy generally when you you know just uh, if you're one of the shorter or middling stacks yeah i mean for the middle stacks they're usually the ones who are under the most pressure in a spot like this obviously you know you have that uh the chance that you're likely to just move up a lot of spots if you don't uh, get involved in any big pots and that's uh, worth a lot of you know a lot of value to you um, so usually, you know, as a middle stack, you're looking to play a little bit more conservatively, um, pick your spots, and uh, hopefully, you know, ideally you can kind of just tread water, let some people bust, and then, you know, just bank some payouts before you have to play a big pot. But obviously, you know, sometimes the cards don't go that way. Uh, really interesting hand there, too. Ole was able to get away cheap. Yeah, pretty intense. And, and our friend Aram there was, uh, was, was showing us some video footage. I don't know if you caught that. Did you see the cam he's doing? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what is going on. He's having some fun. I've, I've actually never seen at a final table the live video. I've seen the emojis and we've seen some stuff, but he's already coming in hot with some, some, uh, some, some, some color, some insight into what he's doing. Maybe that's where the game moves in the future, Mike. It's, it's on video, it's live, you know, and, and you're playing. But that was definitely, definitely interesting. We're seeing some, some high intensity hands and a lot of chips here as we see the chip leader uh, with. 5.3 million, a couple of Brazilians in there. Who else, any other players that you're maybe just not familiar with? Is there any other names that you don't recognize? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I've seen, you know, Crush Toads and Forrest Lee. I think I've played with them a little bit, but they're definitely not, uh, you know, I don't know who those players are. and I haven't played with them very much. Uh, so those would be, you know, a little bit uh, lesser known, maybe more wildcard players. I'm not sure. Uh, Nico Soinenen, um you know, I've played with a lot of Finnish players, but I don't specifically recognize that name either. So uh, definitely some new guys. You know, Aram Oganyan's in there. I played with him a decent amount. Um, don't know too much about him, but definitely someone that's uh, been around on the in the GG streets for the last little bit. Yeah, we see a couple of big hands here. Ace, Queen, and Tens. Folds to the button. Forrest is going to go ahead and open for the min raise. And two Tens here. Interesting spot. You're very high in the range. You're also... 
you know, you're, you're two of the sort of upper middle stacks here. Kind of curious if we'll see a three bet or a flat. I mean, pretty strong, strong hand though. What do you, what do you like here, Mike? Yeah. I mean, my guess is it's just, uh, against the button raise, it's just too strong. I think he's going to have to three bet and go with the hand probably. Uh, and you know, that's, uh, looks like what Pedro's probably decided to do. And here as, as Forrest, I mean, what do you do? You know, your hand is kind of way too strong to fold. Flatting is, is certainly an option, but you know, with an offsuit hand like offsuit ace queen, you, you very often want to go all in in this spot. So can't really yeah, blame him. Look at this. I mean, what a, what a, what a massive pot to start ace queen to tens. Tens is going to be in the lead at the moment going to the turn. Let's see that slow, sweaty river peel here. Is it paint? Is it the, the space ace? It's not. It is a seven of diamonds and what a pot for the Brazilian. Look at this. Three Brazilians at the final table and Forrest is going to come to the victim there of a knockout. Look at him. Pretty impressive resume. Not as active on the Super Millions, but nice, nice amount of score on GG Poker. And we are down to eight just like that. It is 87,000 guaranteed for the remaining eight. Of course, the 500,000 plus the first is what is being looked at. And everyone at the table happy to see a player go out. And, and again, the Brazilians now one and two. And there's another Brazilian there, Rodrigo, with 1.6 million. So we're down to eight already, Mike. I, this could go fast. We got to we got to do this draft. Let's do a quick snake draft. You know how to do it. Red or black. I'll let you choose the next flop. We'll just, we'll select. We'll go uh, one, two, two, and then two, one, right? We'll just snake draft it to four players each. And of course, we'll give the audience okay. something to sweat at today. So uh, you choose color of the flop. Sounds good. Give me red on the next flop. Okay. You're going to get red. All right. We're going to see Oli Shemian. How much have you played with Oli Shemian? I mean, he's got to be one of the more impressive guys in poker live and online one of the people that's just had such a great resume over the years how much experience do you have playing with ole yeah he's definitely the guy i've played with the most of everyone at this uh final table and uh, you know he's always a tough guy to play against don't feels like one of those guys where my track record is not super good you know obviously don't have the full uh you know the full record of every hand that we've ever played in my head but uh, it feels like he's beaten me more often than not so uh, definitely a very tough player yeah, he's he's a guy that knows his way around a final table, that's for sure. Definitely a regular on the Super Millions as well as winning some major live events and plays the high rollers. I believe he has a couple couple children now, and I don't know how active he is on the tour, but I think he does pop up for big events, especially over in Europe. And we see him defend here, Queen 10 off suit in the big blind. And two sevens, got to like the flop, but the, the range does hit the big blind more often here let's see if Rodrigo I mean his stack he's also the shortest risk premium the lowest basically tied for the shortest stack does go ahead and see bet let's see if Ole gets spicier just gives it up here he definitely has you know more fours than Rodrigo but yeah it gives it up there do you expect a hand like what kind of hands there would you would you would you check raise or maybe maybe float if you're Ole I mean other than having obviously the four we see him get dealt aces here in the small blind do you expect Ole to get too crazy or they're just not deep enough in that spot with his hand with one, two overs in the club? Uh, yeah, I'm surprised that he didn't, you know, continue somehow with the club in his hand. I think it would be very reasonable. But, you know, again, you know, you're playing against a shorter sort of middle stack who's maybe opening a, a much tighter range than you're used to. Um, you know, even against the small, the min bet, it can be a little bit dicey against a tighter range. So, uh, you know, got to be one of those plays that, it's just like close either way. It can't be worth too much versus calling versus folding. Nice. Well, Ole doesn't get a customer there. Two aces in the mix. He is going to just pick it up. Everyone's everyone's having a good time. I mean, this is uh, this is definitely one of the bigger super millions we've seen in a little bit. And we are going to not have seen a flop yet. So we will wait for that. Welcome all of you in. Thank you for joining. Appreciate you guys hitting the thumbs up. If you are enjoying yourself at home, we will have a GG ticket, $50 minimum. And if we give you... We'll give you guys three players to sweat where it will be 100 if they win. So Mike and I will have a little action. You guys have a little bit of a sweat at home. And here we see a flop where both players do make top pair. This could be this could be very difficult for Rodrigo to get away. I mean, he does have a weak ace but makes top pair, backdoor flush, and straight jaws. And now Ole with ace queen in position, best hand, very good spot for him. Let's see about sizing. Yeah, this is yeah, a great post. spot for Ole. Definitely going to get paid off at least probably two streets here. And, uh, you know, we'll see what the run out is. Obviously, a lot could change, but looks like it's going to be a tough spot for Rodrigo. Yeah, well, the the good news is for Ole that he's got a 100% to win the hand, at least 
if he somehow were to, I don't really see a path where this would be go any differently. But if you're Rodrigo, this is a bit of a scary card. Things are going on. Broadway is two pairs more likely. And you're, you're right. Two streets, though, definitely. It's not easy just a full top pair. Knowing only is capable. Could have a gut shot in a pair here. Some other equity. He's putting the pressure on. Big bet on the turn. Man, if Rodrigo can find a fold here, it would be impressive. But kind of hard to get away from top pair. But not not for him. He just gets away. Are you surprised with that fold yeah. just on the turn? Or... Or do you like it? Yeah, I think the queen was actually a pretty bad turn card for Ole. Definitely, uh, you know, made a lot more uh, strong hands in his range. Some of his bluffs improved. Um, so good fold there by Rodrigo, especially, you know, under the ICM pressure, getting away from, from top pair and uh, minimizing the losses where, you know, you're just going to be in a, in a miserable spot on any river card, uh, I think is, is pretty reasonable. And uh, Ole, for sure, you know, isn't flatting quite as wide a range there because of the ICM stuff. So it's not as easy to figure out where he's drawing all his bluffs from in that spot. For sure. Well, we are a red flop there. I believe you chose red, correct? So you get first yes. pick. All right. So uh, I'll take my... I know you're going to want to get all the Brazilians because I know you have that Brazilian uh, affinity. So I'm going to get Pedro before you, you snap them all up. Man, you you just you know your man too well, and uh, you also just tell me what I'm doing. That 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 makes it more frustrating. But I will I will go ahead and take Pablo Silva. I know very very accomplished Brazilian player. Also, five million chips is is very healthy, and then I'll take Ole. Got to go with him. I'm gonna take the nod over future of me. I don't know much about that player. I know Ole can deliver, so I'll, I'll go those two, and then you get two. All right, well, I'm going to have to take Future then. And, uh, oh, my guy, Aram's got three eights here, so I think I better pick him. <laughs> All right, so so you got, what'd you get? So you have, you've done one, you've done three picks right now. I get, uh, so what, it's one more. So I'll take, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take Crushed Toads, that flag. I feel like that flag just brings power, right? That's just a, it's just, a, it's just, they seem to be, be difficult, tough players. And I'm going to take my man Crushed Toads with 2.3 million chips and and then you get what you have one more is that remaining one guy only is that right is there two left um, there's two left there's two left yeah you get one more yeah. guy here right yep your pick the, oh is it my pick then or no wait i get two are we doing i think it's your two, pick two two you yeah okay yeah, yeah you're right i get two so i'll take uh i'll take the brazilian of course rodrigo and you'll you'll get nico then so we got four and four right. pablo called the river there i mean the board bricks out all, everything misses diamonds over you know straights there's there's all kinds of bluffs there and aram has uh been chirping and putting videos out i think we might catch another live shot of him as he's up to 4.2 million and and chipping up pablo can't blame him for calling although you know tough spot and uh it is it is tightening up the chip stacks ole with the queen three suited here maybe playing a lot of tables maybe changing diapers who knows there he is Aram is back. He is showing. He is showing off his. I don't know whose graph that is, but it, it, he's 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 excited about it. Might be his. He is on the he's on the rise, looking for 538k. People are having fun today. We see the open of future of me on the button. 810 off, gonna pick it up. So nice, uh, nice, nice light open there. But uh, and Mike, what what do you got live coming up? You playing any any series? Have you been playing? Give me a little bit of a rundown. What you been up to? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been uh, just got back from a big trip. Um, I mean, the only poker I played, I guess, was in London, but I was on uh, some vacation before that with my wife. Um, uh, so I did EPT London, and uh, I'm not sure. I might go to, to EPT Prague at the end of the year, or I might just take some time off before uh, the new year, and I'm looking forward already to uh, to Bahamas and PSPC. Very cool. Yeah, it's a, a lot of poker. People are fired up. There's a ton of events. Poker's jamming. Online spend seems pretty, pretty good. The turnout surprise pools, and of course, live poker also on the rise so yeah good times for poker ahead and i know we are we are in for a special treat today and as we get to see our first blind on blind matchup here interesting the ace three suited see a lot of blind on blind limp situations a little bit deeper what, what do you think here are you are you surprised by this opener with the suited wheel ace to covering by a lot you could just kind of start putting some pressure on yeah, I think it's more about the stack situation. I think, you know, the ace three suit is definitely not uh, normally a hand that you would raise out of the small blind, probably one of the last hands that you'd want to raise. But uh, in this situation, I think he's just decided, you know, crush toads with kind of the middling stack there. Uh, he really wants to apply pressure right away. So he's probably thinking he's going to raise a lot of hands. Uh, so including, you know, an ace three suited seems reasonable enough. Yeah, well, crush toads not deterred, does flat, fairly modest hand, eight six. And of course, the ace three suited likes this flops, got the range advantage. 
where with Ace King also has a ace in the hand with the nut flush draw. So it goes ahead and C bets takes it down. Nice pop for Pedro. Looks like probably gonna put the foot on the gas as he is the chip leader and has a decent decent lead and also some pretty good pretty good situation in terms of where the chips are lined up. And here we go, another blind on blind situation. And Aaron, man, he was uh, he was ready with King Nine Spades. He was not gonna be folding or probably letting a limp go through and crushed toads does give it up as we see the next hand here and mike what is uh what what to you on a schedule when you're playing a 10k buy-in or 25ks online because you do play the high stakes of so those that maybe aren't familiar with mike how do you how do you adjust with tables when you're playing some of the higher stakes stuff versus middle what's the most tables you'll play when you're playing online poker tournaments uh, online these days uh I find six is kind of my cap. I find that can get kind of stressful, but if there's six really good tournaments on, uh, I'll probably do it. But I, I just can't handle more than that, and I feel a lot more comfortable playing four, you know, uh, getting a little bit older, I guess. Yeah, it's it. I, I think there's a lot to be said about focusing and doing less is more and, and not getting too spread thin. Also, players, uh, the quality's gone up, and if you're playing big buy-ins, of course, that can, you know, six six tables of high stakes can get expensive. You throw in some rebuys and whatnot, but we are going to go ahead and see a flop here. Both players connect somewhat. Aram has the gut shot with the four on the five, six, seven, ten, four diamonds, backdoor diamonds. Ole with top, top on a flop that is interesting. He's blind on blind spots. Is it fair to say that, that blind on blind is one of the most interesting spots in poker and one that just comes up so frequently? Is that, is that something that you would say most players are not caught up on where it's a spot a lot of errors are made, Mike? Is that, is that a fair statement? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, any spot like that where the ranges get, you know, the widest that they really ever are pre-flop, um, it adds, you know, a lot more of a skill cap and it's definitely a situation that, you know, doesn't come up as often, I guess. A nice river here for Aram. Uh, so yeah, people definitely, you know, it's, it's a lot to, uh, to, you know, how much to fight for those pots, you know, it's easy to overdo it or it's easy to not fight hard enough. Um, and you know, you see, definitely see more big mistakes kind of either way, um, in these blind on blind battles, you know, definitely I bust out a lot of tournaments playing, you know, big pots, blind on blind battles where, uh, it just, uh, you know, you have to fight for those pots and sometimes it just ends up even a limp pot just ends up getting really big. For sure. Well, Ole does flop very well. This ru this run out is, you know, it's a bit uh, it's a bit interesting. He does go for a third pot on the river. Let's see if Ole can sort out. And that's something that it just seems so Ole does call here. Interesting, uh, interesting sizing and also maybe a bit of a function of the player, right? Aram, and it is maybe he has a little less experience with or also maybe he just feels is more wild, more capable of doing some, I mean, the guy is throwing videos, right? He's throwing videos out the final table. I've, I've literally never seen that. I've seen, I think I've done 25 super millions roughly, and I've never seen a player go live video shot. I've seen the emojis and all that. So this guy's got a personality. Let's see how he can do here. He is he is battling with some of the world's best, and he's a relatively unknown, at least on the super million streets that I've seen. So let's see how that plays to his advantage. Sometimes you feel it's harder to play against guys that you just don't know about versus playing some of the best in the world that you're really, you're, you're kind of, you have experience with them, but also you know kind of how their mind sort of works. Like, do you find that it's tricky to play against some amateurs or players that you just don't have info on? Uh, it certainly can be tricky, and this is just going to get all on preflop here. Um, you know, usually players that you don't know, they're more likely to just be making mistakes. Uh, and so in general, you know, that's going to go go better. But uh, playing against, you know, pretty good players that you don't know that much about, uh, it can be tough because you don't really know, you know, you want to ideally be able to find some some exploits uh and it's just not always that easy to know which way to lean yeah this is going to be a all-in and bam look at that the king wow. wow that is uh that is that is a wild run out right there the king on the river and the brazilians man putting two ko's putting them in the gg poker wins three hundred thirty-three thousand. that's a nice addition to that and that is a tough way to go out on that run out special river card for pedro he's got 8.5 million commanding chip lead and the future of me with 4.5 is also sitting nice there's a couple of stacks of consolidated and that is a man those those river cards those are the ones that hurt right this is a bigger than normal super millions almost like 2x the normal prize pool right you're there you're at the final table you're huge pot huge equity and it comes in a rough run out so unlucky for the player here and here's Pedro going to work and Ole, get Ole, man. He just 
knows. He's like, hey, this guy's got a lot of chips. He's probably open and light. And let me let me kind of set the tone and three bet here. And he does pick it up, man. The guy, the guy impresses me. I gotta say, I, I don't get like, yeah. I, I don't want to toot his horn too much, but Ole's timing just always seems to kind of to understand situations, those small edges, understanding dynamics at a table, what's likely happening, and and just finds a way to uh, to maneuver. So huge pickup there. He's at two point eight million getting a successful three bet through the two short stacks sitting short, but they still got plenty of chips. Let's see Rodrigo and Nico, how they play out. And at home guys, again, hope you're, you are enjoying. We are here going to play to a winner. We're having fun. Mike Watson joins. I'm Jeff Gross, your host, and this is another edition of super millions. And it's been big action online this weekend. Mike, you've been, you've been playing some, did you play Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. I was playing uh, W Coop and I played this tournament as well, uh, a few other things. So it was a, uh, it was a pretty big Sunday. I was excited to be in there. For sure. And looking back on Sunday over the course of however many years you've been playing poker online, have you changed your preparations over time? Is it like you wake up and you kind of just go in or, or are you much more dialed in nowadays where you like map out your schedule, know what time you're starting, have a plan in place. Would you say that you've gotten more accustomed to being, uh, more of a professional than back in the college days, maybe r- waking up, rolling out of bed and just firing anything that, that comes up. Have you changed any shifted over the years in terms of preparation? Yeah, definitely. To some extent, I wouldn't say I'm the most like, you know, super rigorously prepared or whatever, uh, like some people, but, uh, I do find that, you know, now, especially where I'm only able to maybe play up to six tables. If it's a really busy Sunday, I kind of need to, you know, like write down the schedule and like map out, you know, what tournaments I want to play when I want to register you know, what tournaments I can wade and like register late, what ones I want to get in right away. Uh, I found that yeah. really helpful because otherwise, you know, you end up missing things. Absolutely. And this is a pretty big situation. Rodrigo opens tens, of course, massive hand. And wow, this oh, is so super it. interesting. So tens is going to get to fold the best hand most likely. Wait, actually, how many blinds does he have? So it's a raise, jam, rejam, and a... We're talking about the difference between wow he is uh man he's he's in the tank he folds so huge spot aram now gets the best hand to fold gets the flip can he somehow no that is going to be hard 97 percent flops no. Ooh, chance it's always a sweat always a sweat no way it is not going to okay. be the runner runner it's going to be a double for nico so big swing there rodrigo would have been out with tens to to ace suit instead aram leaves uh, loses the pot, loses some chips, but all players remain in the game. So that was a that was a pretty interesting run out there. What do you think the cutoff would be for Rodrigo? He's got to have a huge hand to to call. Ten's obviously a big fold. Do you think he's not? I mean, Jax is a queens not going to fold queens. Where where's the cutoff there for him? I think he was probably short enough that he he might need to play Jax there. But certainly tens, I think, was a a pretty clear fold. Just a, an unfortunate uh, spot where he had to had to fold. You know, well. He escaped, as it turned out, but had to fold what would have been the best hand. Yep. Well, we're seeing a lot of blind-on-blind sequences here is another. We see fours and queen-eight suited. Nice flop for Ole. He's got the bottom pair with the second up flush run. Aaron with fours. Not going to be too interested in this board. Let's see what Ole comes with here. He does go for about a about a half-size hot bet and, you know, Force not interested, not a lot of good scenarios there. It does get out of the way. Anytime you can say in your mind, if you hit a card, you feel like you have the nuts with one out. It's it's not good. So he does does get away from that. And so we've seen some high intensity action here. It's just going pretty quick. We easily could have lost another player as well as we're already down to seven shortly into the day today. Uh, I think Pedro's Pedro showing he's going to be willing to go for it. And here we're going to see Aram with the ace king on the button going to be interested to, to put some pressure on. And Pedro actually going to have a bit of a, a tough decision here with eights getting three bet most likely by the button. Aaron does go for the relatively small size three bet. What do you like? May, do you like the size? Do you like 480? It seems small. Yeah, I think, uh, I think in this spot he wants to go a bit bigger because uh, he probably isn't three betting, you know, a whole lot of hands here as two of the bigger stacks in the tournament against the chip leader. Uh, so I think he probably wants to go bigger and a little bit more polar. Um, but you know, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, so he does get on Pedro. Pedro has a club. Aram does not have a club. It's a 447 flop. He does continuation bet as expected. And now Pedro, these are always, to me, these are always so interesting. When you have the low middle-ish pair, I mean, eights is a respectable pair. 
but you're out of position, you get three bet and you get this type of board, right? It's like, it's kind of, a, it, it gets very interesting fast. Cause like you peel the one, but now you've called the three bet and you're peeling and you realize you might be getting, you could get put in some very difficult situations and get shelled off. So he does go for the check raise, which is a, an also a pretty interesting line. Thoughts on this check raise versus check, check call. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen Pedro make this type of play a little bit. He does uh, tend to play, I think, some of these over pairs a little bit more aggressively out of position, which, uh, you know, is often a good play. Uh, I think, you know, under the ICM spot as the chip leader, you can maybe expect Aram to play a little bit more straightforward against the check raise there, uh, you know, where he's not too worried about getting floated by some weird hand and getting blocked off of it later. So uh, I like, uh, I think the play is, is you know, is fine. It's solid. Yeah, well, he is up to 9.4 million. Very solid start for him with over second place, double second at the moment. And everyone's sort of looking up at what might be. It is a tall order to come. And future of me is in there with a clean turn. Could be a very dicey board. A lot of lot of scary turns and also just not even necessarily knowing you have the best hand on the flop or could be out kicked. But now you feel a lot better on the jack-jack 10-10. Jack, and Olay with the ace of hearts here getting called on the flop has has a 600k in the middle interesting interesting decisions i mean he could you got to believe he's going to check back he does do that and let's see now though if the river what future comes with sizing could get hero called for sure by certain hands also uh with a check back in the turn I, I would i would imagine he goes a little bit bigger here but what do you think yeah i'd imagine the size here has got to be pretty big you're just repping a full house basically that's it right so you're going to go pretty big any jack or 10 you're you're pretty sure is the nuts and then you know it's not hard to find flush draws straight draws various things to bluff with so uh small pairs even you know and like threes or fours wouldn't have folded the flop so there's lots of potential bluffs so it seems like you want to go really big yeah so only actually with no he doesn't have a queen a king a nine a diamond this is and he has the ace this is this does actually seem like a good candidate for a hero call, but it's also that the price is very, very taxing there. Do you do you expect him to fold the majority of the time with this hand, or would you would you think that just for that sizing it's too much, and he might call some other bets, or or I mean, Ole Ole just seems to get it right. What what do you? He does. He does. What do you? It's a tough uh, tough spot though. I mean, it does seem like a pretty tough spot. Is uh, what what do you think are some considerations there? If it's not necessarily just the block, because he does have a good calling candidate hand, if I'm not mistaken. So what uh. What do you think is the determining factor for him to fold there? Uh, yeah, I mean, it could just be something where he knows something about the player or feels, you know, that uh, the sizing is uh, is strong for whatever reason, that maybe he would not choose that size. I think he probably would if he's bluffing, but sometimes people aren't as consistent with that as they as they could be. Uh, certainly, Ole, you know, in theory, has to call some of his ace high there. Um, and... You know, the eight is maybe not ideal, does block some seven, eight, eight, nine type hands uh, that could potentially be bluffing. So maybe that's a consideration is why he chose to fold that ace high. Uh, certainly a hand like ace queen or ace king would be a much stronger calling candidate, but you probably can't only call ace queen and ace king there either. Right. Yeah, I think well said. That makes a ton of sense. So ace eight suited here. Got the chip leader who you know is going to be a bit out of line. It's a suited ace eight. You don't have a lot of fold equity. Does get out of the way there. Could have it's kind of close ish, but does does give it up. And he would have ran into the bus saw of his fellow Brazilian. I, I love it. Did I get all the Brazilians? Is that no? You picked uh, you picked one. No. You let out with paid the chip leader. You had Pedro, right? Basically, everybody that's won a big pot since the time we made the bet and now is on my team. And uh, everyone that's been losing pots is on your team. I was just, I didn't want to be the one to say it. it I knew that was what was <laughs> happening. And I just, I didn't want to be the one to bring it up. But yes, that is true. And uh, the oh, we got to give the audience at home. We got to give the audience at home someone to sweat with. So let's give them the chip leader, Pedro. Let's give them the shortest stack, Rodrigo. And then I'll let you choose one other player they get to have for the, the $100 versus the $50 bonus for the ticket today, which we will do at the end of the show giveaway. All right. I feel like the people at home, they want Ole on their team. So let's let's give them that. Let's give them what they want. Let's give them, you know, I'm feeling generous today. We're going to we're gonna throw in Future of Me. We'll give them four, four, four right. players to, to sweat at Future of Me. So they got, they got four out of the remaining seven players to get $100 versus the $50 ticket. So let's 
Let's see what they can come up with today. We'll, we'll, we got ourselves a dinner sweat, of course, for our, for for our lovely wives as well. So it's a four person dinner, dessert, drinks, the whole deal. This is it's not a this is a it's a real bet. This is like you know this isn't this isn't a hundred dollar lunch bet, Mike. We got we got real stuff going on here. We're gonna we're we're gonna have a nice nice time. I, I like your side right now, but it's it's a long way to go. There's a lot that can happen. And how Rigo is gonna rip in his ten blinds. I think what's a ten? Oh, he goes for the min raise. Wow. Again, we see more of this. Raising, not shoving off these stacks, but ace ten off in this position, seven handed. When the under the gun folds, you like the min raise, or, or is am I am I just is that crazy to shove there? Is it a mandatory min raise? No, I think I would definitely be shoving that one. Uh, there are definitely some situations, you know, under ICM final table situations where you do min raise off of some fairly short stacks, but in this situation, he, you know, Rodrigo's the shortest stack by a lot. Ace ten off is not the hand that wants to get really like called by the big blinds, you know just have some two random live cards play against you getting a good price. Uh, I think the ace-10 probably just wanted to jam there. You know, there's chances are, you know, you've got to make some moves. You've got to accumulate some chips as the shortest by a long shot. So I don't think there's any reason to be super risk adverse. I think he just wants to put it in. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So here we go. King Jack suited on our friend Aram, who is, was chipped up pretty nicely. He's had a little adversity all of a sudden losing that flip, although a pretty good result. He did get the better hand to fold, got the equity on uh, for, a, for a coin flip with the best hand, actually, as it turned out when the cards turned over. And here, he's going to get three bet. And this is one of those hands. King Jack suited, solver world, one of the magical kind of four bet hands or hands you can just kind of stuff in or, or play a big pot with. Do you, do you think Aram seems to have the propensity to go for it? I don't know if he's, he's – I don't think he's folding. I don't think he's folding, but calling doesn't seem like an amazing choice here out of position – to flat and play a pot. What do you what do you think he'll do here? Um, I don't know him well enough to predict what he'll do. I wouldn't have thought he folded. I agree with you there. I'm a, I'm surprised that he just gave it up. Uh, but it is a difficult spot. You don't really want to call out a position there a lot, especially given their relative chip standings. And then, you know, going for a four bet or like an all in jam is uh, obviously very risky. So I can understand why he ended up uh, throwing that one away. But that was a that was a tough spot. Yeah, very, very tough spot. And, you know, I guess, right, We, we if he had gone all in, it looks like it probably would have worked, but you can't blame him. And, you know, it's like shows, he's showing some, he's showing some pizzazz and spice. But, you know, when you do the, when you do the, holly, when you do the, the videos and the, the emojis and you look kind of like you're an action loose player, you kind of, you want to have it, right? When you actually go all in, you want to be a little higher up in your range. And King Jack Suda was, no, it's a good hand, but he uh, he thought better of it, and he'll live to fight another day. He's got two point nine million, sitting very healthy, but a pretty tough tough seat with Ole and Pablo directly on his left, as well as future me healthy. Rodrigo now in pretty critical condition, eight hundred thousand chips, and he is eyeing up that next pay jump. Will put you over six figures, as it turns out, is going to be Aram and Pedro going to battle here. I think pretty standard. Jack A suited a nice hand, closing the action to take a flop with. He does that. And he is a seeing a flop, 430k in the middle, tough spot a little bit for Aram. He does have the the range advantage. He is also in the lead. He has the best hand, best position. Goes for a small bet, makes sense. Let's see if Pedro's willing to just give this up with no backdoor flush draw and not a great board, makes sense. So good, good, good swing there for Aram. He's back over three million, sitting healthy. Anyone impressed you? Any hands so far today have stood out to you that we've seen or pretty standard stuff? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'd say it's all standard, but I think for the most part, yeah, people are playing well. Haven't seen any uh, super crazy, you know, calls or uh, or folds. I did, uh, you know, Rodrigo made that very solid fold with the Ace Five. Uh, not sure if that would say it super impressed me, but it was a it was a very solid uh, very solid play to not get carried away with that hand against Ola. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, it's a lot of good players. People are mostly mostly playing well. Yeah, well. Nico is going to get to stuff this in. Ace Jack suited, had Pablo in relatively bad shape, would have been in position with the best hand, but a pickup for Nico gets to take it down. No contest with 2.5 million now. So, a couple premium hands. We've seen Aces handed out, Ace King suited now here. Uh, Aaron is in the small blind with ace jack of diamonds. So this could get uh, this could get licked up. It's about 10 blinds exactly. We saw him min raise ace 10 off. Let's see if he's going to do the same thing. Uh, interesting that he shoves ace king suited, min raises ace 10 off. I, I would be I'm a little surprised by that. Maybe maybe also giving a little insight into his game plan. That ace 10 is like real willing to just kind of raise fold if 
you know, he gets any adversity or doesn't want to just push it in there. And Aram is going to look him up and off to the race is the Brazilian with the advantage. And it is a ace high flop, ace queen six, ace king suited still in the lead, helpfully in the lead. Going to have to fade a three outer on the river. If he can do it, he will be back in the game. And he does that. So not a three outer, but a three, 1.7 million. Aram is at 2.2 million. And things going to tighten up a little bit now as the short stack gets back into the game. So we got to, little new dynamic here and of course the pay jumps you can see in the lower right of your screen everyone eyeing that five hundred thirty eight thousand dollar prize pool what is uh what's the biggest online score you've had as i mentioned mike you've got 16 million in live earnings play the biggest tournaments in the world and travel the circuit what about online what's your largest online score uh you know i'm not sure i think it's somewhere in the range of like 300k or so um i did i believe get third in the super millions one week when it was a very big one so that might be the biggest one um i've you know won a few 10ks i mean i guess i've won like a small field 25k probably at some point that was actually like 500k uh, so that might technically be the biggest but winning like 18 buy-ins you know it's a big number but uh, it doesn't feel like the biggest score i guess you know, winning like a big a 10k with a couple hundred or like a big uh, a big field smaller buy-in would would feel like more of an accomplishment i guess yeah it's yeah it's uh it's online is you know i try to equivalent the 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 buy-ins for live and online where, where would you say the current level is for online and live poker what like a 1k online is what live would you if you just had to throw out kind of a random to to, to put an equilibrium there yeah, hard to say exactly. Obviously, like so many live stops are different, but you know, I think maybe a one K online is kind of, uh, I guess, equivalent to, uh, you know, maybe like a, I guess, like even like a main event, like a five K main event is probably a little bit softer than that. Um, but you know, depends on the tournament. Uh, in general, certainly, like any sort of mid stakes two to three K tournament, most of those that you play online at a big stop or you play live at a big stop are going to be are going to be softer than uh, than a 1k online uh, but you know it's, it's hard to equivalent there are some very tough 1ks that are you know smaller fields that's just all the best players and then you've got your your big field ones on the weekend where you're getting you know a thousand fifteen hundred entries that are not quite as uh, as top heavy with the best players uh, and yeah we've got another interesting hand here Pedro's decided to three bet the nines and now he's kind of put himself in this uh, kind of tricky spot in the middle here where he has a hand he probably doesn't really want to fold to a small four bet but it's not really, uh, you know, shoving or calling here are not very appealing either. Yeah, calling can't feel too good. I, I would think he does do it, and this is the problem. You get the jack six four, pretty clean, right? If you're if you're thinking, oh, let me not see an ace king, even a queen, and you get the jack six four rainbow board here. This is uh, two point one in the million, one point six in Nico stack, the SPR less than one. This is going to be. Be curious how, how Pedro handles this. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure, you know, after calling preflop, how is he really supposed to get away from this? Uh, it's going to be a really tough. And the money is probably going to go up or, you know, he certainly can't fold to this bet. So is he just going to just going to call with, you know, one million behind into a three million chip pot? That's a uh, that's a tricky spot. And, you know, we've seen Pedro be aggressive with these mid pairs and stuff uh in the past so i wouldn't be surprised if he just decided to go with it here you know hope he runs into the ace king or a bluff but no he he does call and looks like he will probably get away from the hand is there ever a scenario might... where he gets to win it with this play yeah, in this way I mean, with maybe. The... it's certainly plausible that he could turn this into a bluff um uh, i don't know i mean there's so little left to play it would be tough to get it through but Definitely, definitely can't blame him. I mean, Nico's probably sitting there thinking, like, what the heck did this guy even flat my four bet with? You know, that uh, that you know that is air on this on this board. I mean, it's hard to, you know, nines and tens probably aren't really supposed to play this way very often. So it's uh, it's difficult to imagine kind of what Pedro's bluffs are. I mean, certainly he's not going to turn a jack into a bluff, I don't think. So this is uh, going to be a tricky spot. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if Pedro's going to go for it or not, but I wouldn't blame him if he did. Wow. Yeah, it sort of does set the table. I mean, his hand yeah, kind of looks like more like when it checks twice. I guess the question he's thinking is, what would ace-king do or ace-queen 
suited would they check it twice and wow he does go for it and nico the plan he gets cute a little bit right not even and not cute in a bad way like going for max value small you know small three bet pre or i was a four bet i'm sorry four bet and then he goes small in the flop gets the nightmare turn card and then goes ahead and now has a very difficult decision man i i don't envy his position but this is uh like you said, the big problem here is you can't expect nines and tens to necessarily play like this. So when you take those hands kind of out of what you think your opponent has, it gets very dicey. There's not a lot of yeah, not a lot of hands here. Yeah, this looks a lot like it could be you know three aces, three jacks. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to figure out because I don't really think Pedro is supposed to be flatting the four bet much at all. So it's kind of a weird spot to try to guess what his range looks like, but. Um, We'll we'll see what uh, what Nico decides here. Wow, audience, what do you think? Call full twelve minutes thirty second chess clock remaining. Every player does get fifteen minutes. You see, not a lot of people have used a lot of clock here. This is one where we might see a little more. This is not an easy decision. You're talking about going out right now for a hundred and thirteen thousand versus a chance to play for five million. Also, though, you call and you win. And what you have over five million chips, you have five point three million chips, roughly, I believe. So that is uh, a lot of implications here for the player, for the table, tense moments, and trying to find out what is the answer. It is a very, very tricky spot. You know, you just call off. You feel so silly when he has when he has the ace. I mean, there's a lot That's of suited right. aces too, right? There's a lot of suited aces that the player could have could have three bet you pre flop. Then that says. I mean, what 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 specifically is a realistic range to put on as the hand play? Like, let's talk about that. What you think? What you would expect if you take out nines and tens? I mean, what kind of suited aces are in this this type of line where you three bet call the four bet typically? Yeah, I mean, at a final table, you know, you wouldn't expect a hand like ace queen suited to necessarily three bet the first time because again, you end up in that really gross spot when you get four bet. Um, certainly, that's a hand that could make sense though. Could float the flop. Um, with two overs and a back door, and then hit the ace. Uh, a hand like, you know, probably the main hand I think that Nico might expect to see here is just top set of aces. Um, you know, that's a hand that Pedro would likely play this way, you know, very high percentage of the time, I imagine. Um, three jacks as well, certainly possible, but it's hard to figure out how Pedro would have, you know, just an ace. Like, maybe he could play ace-king like this some of the time, but not going in free flop with ace-king seems very unusual. Um, yeah. So, you know, Nico's kind of just hoping that he played three nines or three tens this, or sorry, pair of nines, pair of tens this way. Um, but, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, going back to preflop, I think those are the hands, like Pedro wants to put a lot of pressure on Nico preflop here, which is understandable given the stack distribution right now. There's a lot of these short middle stacks. He can really go after them. But the hands that he usually doesn't want to do that with so much are like the mid strength hands where, you know, if you get jammed on, folding a hand like a nines or tens doesn't feel good. You know, even getting four bets small, well, now what do you do? Do you continue getting the good price or do you just fold it and potentially allow yourself to get four bet bluffed? Um, you know, given how much you're three betting light, you don't really want to uh, give up these like strong hands once you three bet them, given how much air is in your range. So I think that was maybe the decision in this hand that I have the most issue with. Uh, but now, you know, we'll see. Pedro may have been bailed out here by this ace on the turn. You know, he may have... Uh, been able to turn this sort of aggressive line preflop into a huge win uh, if he can get Nico to to lay it down. I, I like to say think long, think wrong. I, I, I was thinking he's definitely folding at this point, but now I'm actually, I think it's like he's really, he's like spot on, right? He's just like dead on, can't decide. Like he's like flipping coins. Yeah, wow, he does go ahead and fold. And, you know, credit to Pedro because you say it's a little unconventional. He's got the chip lead, also maybe just super confident in his ability post flop and that's also the difference between just ripping in sort of modest or flipping type hands when you go post flop you get put in some tricky situations but if you're alert and aware okay here's kind of what my opponent has queens kings ace king you play the streets out right you play the turn you play the river and then you get to kind of feel the temperature and the pulse of the player so uh, a higher variance line and pedro up to 11.2 million having an absolute uh, a magical ride so far at this final table, but he is again in a four to one spot uh, out, out of uh, position here this time, not in position. So a little bit of a difference. Also, Aram stack, you know, he's got 2.2 million. Let's see. I mean, does he ever just 
just decide to put pressure. He's just going, he's going to the streets. My man likes to see flops. This is, this is going in and this time it's a, it's a bit different, but same thing, you know, here's Queens 10 Jack King, not the, not the worst flop, but not the greatest flop either for Aaron. There is some, some hands that beat him. He does block like King Queen suited. He blocks ace queen. So I, I don't know if you're, if you're Aram here, I guess you're, you're feeling okay about this. What Kings does this player really have? Ace King, you would have heard about, right? It would have just been, been in. So, so, I mean, it's kind of, again, it's a little bit like to your point, he's sort of stepping out on the conventional sort of ranges on what hands he's flatting without a position. You know, if you're, if you're Aram there and this hand plays out, how are you, what do you, how do you approach that flop? Uh, yeah, I think he did well, just a small bet. Uh, you know, like the range of hands that you're three betting there is very, very strong. Hits that flop super hard. Uh, Pedro for sure is going to have, you know, it was a relatively small bet. So him continuing with like middle pairs, small pairs and like suited aces and stuff. Um, definitely going to make up some reasonable part of his range, depending on exactly how, how loose or how wide he feels like feeling. So uh, I think, you know, just the small bet, you have a big range advantage. Certainly Pedro could have some very strong hands, but uh, I think Aram did well, basically. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, and our our friend Pedro's really distribution getting a lot of playable hands. He's made a couple of good plays and been in the streets, but he's he's getting dealt pairs and playable playable ace jacks. And here he is with future of me raising jack eight off. Does call is a dominated hand that now is in the lead. Ace three eight two diamonds. Future of me can't love the flop, but definitely could bet small here. There it is. She's at twenty, roughly twenty percent. Bet size met with the jack of diamonds and also mid pair. Pretty, pretty good flop, uh, reasonable flop, let's say. I mean, the ace is out there, but if you are Pedro, it's uh, you got you're on the dance floor and he comes in check raising. Look at this. This guy's got he's got moxie, he's got good feel, kind of understands what's happening, where he's at, and maybe is going to fall through on some diamonds, right? That's a part of the plan. Could get maybe an ace, put an ace in a tough spot. There's also those type of hands that just bet 20% that have absolutely. Really nothing, and he does pick it up. So, again, look at this. Nines. My man is dealt in, and Nico, this could be bad news for Nico. It doesn't look like there's an opener before him. This may just be a shove, and Pedro getting to look him up for a 4-1 to one favorite for a KO. Let's see. Don't see any other way this plays out in this particular hand. Let's let's see what Nico does. Seems about as close to guarantee as you can. And nine one one, it is an emergency. He is in trouble. 4-1 to one favorite for a big... Big, big pot, two million at stake, four to one dog. Let's see the flop. Okay, the ace comes, but not a, you know what, needs a five or five only. He's got about 5%, and it is a, it's like a middling upper card 10. It is no good, two million chips going Pedro's way. He is at 12.6 million. We are down to six, and these are moving right along. The three Brazilians still in. There's a look at my... Guy Nico, he is on his road to poker stardom. Look at that. Another final tip. GG Poker wins 290000 Looks like a young young lad there from Finland. And uh, congrats on the score. Of course, one and more, but still a good showing. Nice purse for a score for himself. And, and our friend Pedro's picking right up where he left off. King three off, putting the pressure on. He can really start leaning on people here with 12.5, almost 13 million. Are you thinking about where to go for dinner yet or not? Or you don't, you're, you're pretty like down the, you know, you're not, you're not planning yet. Are you? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a beat down though. If there was a buyout, I would, I would be interested. I, I feel like you got, things are really working for you over there. <laughs> you're going to be in Bahamas, right? In January? Planning on it. It's very close. And yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, I've got Sarah looking at menus. So we'll see. Uh, okay. Fair I feel enough. that confident. I'm willing to jinx it all. Uh, I'm going to, gonna have her start uh, looking some things up you know but most expensive restaurants in bahamas let's uh let's see what we can do i love it i love it yeah there's now there's definitely a few there's some there's some there's some good food down there bahamar has got yeah. some restaurants there's there's what great cliffs the one off property is is nice too like you could punish me go some bottles of wine you could take it to the cellar and you know but it's not over it's not over it's not over, it's, no, it's not over left yet right here yeah Yes, it is. And, and we're seeing some great stuff. And another pair for Pedro. He's going to open up fours. Rodrigo, 3-8 suited. Decides not really the time or place to, to peel. He is the short stack, risk premium the lowest, but just just not quite the, the hand. He would have only had one over, actually, as we saw it as well. Only Jack 8 been quiet. Pablo also is still in the mix with 4 million chips. Future of me. No one's really been that active. I think Pedro's taking the stardom here, the spotlight. He's been the most... 
most active, played a lot of hands, got dealt in, done some dirty work, getting some knockouts for everyone. And Aram's cooled off the the video as well. He's sort of you know locked in, realizes, hey, I'm playing for a half a million, and let me let me focus in here. Six left, one forty six, big pay jump, forty four thousand up for grabs, and Pablo is gonna go ahead and out. Hit a nice flop. Ace 10 should just end the hand here. King 5 off doesn't, can't imagine much interest for Pedro. Yeah, yeah. So they're going on. I mean, as you said, Pedro is probably just going to keep up the pressure. You know, all four of these, or sorry, five of these guys have kind of pumpable, shorter stacks. You know, Pablo and Future of Me are a little bit ahead, but everyone really doesn't want to bust at this point in time. Uh, Pedro's got the big chip lead and. He's going to really put pressure. I expect he's probably going to raise here and just come after Aram. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 he's got the green light to just cause havoc right now. And here we go. Future of me has been quiet, decides, all right, let me open the King Jack off, try to get first in before Pedro gets involved. And he's just going to get stuffed on here by Rodrigo, almost certainly, right? It's a perfect 15 blind, yeah. six handed open and, and fist pump all in. A little frustrating for future of me as he does go ahead and going to have to relinquish a, a pot there. He goes and opens, and now it is up to $2 million for Rodrigo. Aram sees that sick. He knows that's not what he wants. He wants to see the chips funnel away from the short stack, but here we go. King, Jack, King, Queen, and sevens. Three playable hands. And will Pedro get a little spicy with the Jack-10 even? That chip lead. All right, that'd be a little. He's had much. so much working for him, right? He's really gotten. He's got a lot of playable hands. He's probably like, I'll just wait and get get eights or tens next hand. He's he's been getting a ton of pairs and decent spots, and and now Ole with the seven six handed. Let's see what he wants to do. Does surf it in on Rodrigo? Yeah, I think it's kind of a close spot there for Ole. Actually, if he's going to play the hand, I think he has to go all in. So. Uh... You know, if he thought where we go was being particularly tight, given the stack consideration, maybe a fold wouldn't be completely out of the question, but can't blame him for shoving there, of course. Yeah, well, we're going to see a flop. A6, king, jack, off a6. Had the best hand, has the best flop. 525 in the middle. A couple of hearts. Neither player in love with the flop, but Ole definitely it's, it looks better for him. Yeah, I don't see how, uh, how future is going to... Be able to continue here tempting with the king jack high you know you might have the best hand but no hearts in his hand it's going to be it's going to be tough to continue yeah yep also a player you know that just just knows his way around boards and and situations so it's a little less appealing i think that's there's a big big part of that too some of the more you know veteran successful players that have people know are just great players they get to get away with a little more just people don't want to get too creative or spicy against them and future's thinking though here he's trying to feel like hey, it's, yeah it's close like it's just i don't like it but it feels, it bad to, taken. it feels bad to throw away the king jack there you know it feels like it's too strong a hand um but you know ole can't be opening super super wide into the two stacks that cover him um you know he didn't even bet like that small it's not like he min bet or something so it, it's kind of hard to you know, I can understand the instinct wanting to fight though is what I'm saying. For sure. Absolutely right. And here future me is also gonna get a opener in front of him. Two fives gonna open and he's kinda getting getting a lot of tricky hands. This is like when you have a final table and you get fives and sevens and ace jack offsuit, ace queen or ace jack suited, ace queen offsuit. These are kinda like the tricky ones where you're like, you know, it's 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 difficult. You're not just getting ace king suited and Kings and aces, you're getting some some tricky hands, and Pablo now getting pressured with the the low pair. This is a interesting spot as well. Flatting doesn't yeah, feel right, but uh, also all three seem like uh, potential options here. I think uh, definitely a strong case for jamming there, and uh, same for future of me again. Just tricky spot where he could have flatted pre flop. You know, they're two of the bigger stacks. They don't really want to play a big pot against each other. Uh, oh, let's see if Rodrigo can, uh, I imagine from what we've seen, he will min-raise here, and it will be interesting to see, I think, what Aram does, because I imagine Pedro is just going to jam it in here, the way he's been playing. I'd be kind of surprised if he didn't. And I don't think that, uh, and we've already seen Aram make this call with nines in a similar spot, so I don't think there's any chance he makes the hero fold here either. Wow. 
You're right. I, I, I mean, it's interesting, though, because Rodrigo is the shortest, and he does min-raise. I mean, yeah, this would be wild if he somehow folded this. I just don't think that's the case. But Yeah, I would think that this is a better call than the last one with nines, but uh, not uh, entirely sure. <laughs> it's close. Oh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Pedro's got it all. The ICM pressure right now is... is significant on these guys you know i mean they're the stacks are kind of jumbled up there's the five of them just kind of don't think they're going to be able to win so they want to climb up into second or third ideally uh so you can understand the fold i think but it seems like he maybe yeah. should have uh taken the chance there all right well we will not be taking a full break but a short message from the sponsor and we'll, we'll see you guys in a second Was that the was that Club GG with the Jack Four off hero call? Is that what is that what happened? I, I caught the end of that there. I didn't even realize that. That was that's 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 good. I gotta say, listen, there's a lot of options for clubs and such. I will say personally at Club GG, there's it, it's pretty special. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Have you played on there? Do you know anything about that? Have you ever seen that by any chance? I mean, it's it's play money, obviously, but are you familiar with how it works? Uh, no, I'd be honest, I know absolutely nothing about it. So. Uh... You know, this is your I'll just give a quick to, uh, to kill it if you want. Yeah, I'm going to give a quick promotion on why if you're if you have friends or people want to play, there's no fees. They do not charge you for chips and there's no like site, you know, fee or anything. It's literally you can make it do your own club, start a game and just have a have a you know play money or do your own game and whatever you do with it and not have where they're like, oh, you have to buy the chips or buy the gems and stuff. So anyway, I, I just got to say, I know a lot of people use it and it's it's a it's a very good option if you're looking at starting a club or a game. So that's all, that's all I'll say about that. But uh, we'll back, back to the action. You're not a play money guy, Mike, you know, you're not a, you're not a, you're not a play with a couple of buddies. Like you, you're, you're playing, you're 16 million in earnings. So I would have bet that you had not dabbled in club GG, but you never know. You got some buddies, some high school friends or people that want to play. It's a good option. That's all I'm saying. It's true, true. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while since I've played any play money hands online, but uh, you know, I can imagine the utility. Wow. Pedro's just going for it here. Uh, big shove, and it's not going to work. You would think not. ICM wise, though, I mean, it's like he's going to. It's going to work most of the time, right? This is kind of one of those perfect spots where everyone's aligned, and he is dominated. But he does have some things that could work. And A Ram has got a huge moment for himself here, and that is runner runner going to be hard. Not this time. No sweat on the turn. Very nice for A Ram, and such a big moment for him. Puts him in second. He's on the direct left of the chip leader, and Man, I'll tell you who was uh, the whole table was rooting for Pedro to let him get that to to move up a pay spot. But now it is very tight for very very tight with Pablo, Ole, and Future, and then Rodrigo on the short side. But what do you think? Was that was that out of line? Do you think maybe just he's, everything's working? You know, just just min raise and play your game, or do you like that shove there? It seems a little much, but yeah, it seemed like he was overdoing it. There are definitely um, you know some big shoves maybe that type of hand that do occasionally come up. Um, it didn't seem like that was the spot to me, but, you know, could be wrong, I suppose. Yeah. But I, yeah, I don't see a lot of motivation. You know, min raise goes very well there as a chip leader. People have to play very conservatively against it. Uh, I don't, you know, they're not going to make some, they have to make some big folds, but the chance that you just run into a huge hand there is, is probably not worth it. What do you what do you think about like queen nine suited there versus ace uh, king nine suited also like just because like maybe queen ace queen folds but ace king calls like is there is there anything with that or is that just a little out the just a little too many chips anyway with the hands? I mean the suited king is the type of hand I think that you might use for a play like that if you were going to make it uh, because you know you have the overcard a lot like a lot of the hands they're calling with you calling you with right. big pairs, um, jacks queens yeah. So I, yeah, so the suited king has like, you know, nothing has good equity against the range of hands you're getting called, but it's it's one of the like reasonable options. Uh, I, you know, in, in some spots I've seen the king nine suited might even be like too good a hand. You might use like a worse suited king. 
um, because, you know, like probably like eights are, are not ever supposed to call you there, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, he's ripping so many chips that maybe he needs to do something a little bit better for his bluff. Um, but it, yeah, it just seems like a spot where the min raise goes so well that you probably don't really need to, to put the maximum pressure on there. Well, he's back at it. Doesn't doesn't have to wait long. He goes ahead and just puts on a light three bet queen eight suited, maybe leveraging Rodrigo stack as a short stack. Future definitely one of the guys that doesn't want to play for all of it without a very strong hand here. And this is a, a pretty good flop for eights if you're going to play this hand this way. And let's see what transpires here. Nico's got to feel sick too, right? Nico got that really nasty hand. He ends up getting bluff queens to nines and then goes out. But uh, future of me has hung in here and is on the turn. Stack to pot ratio exactly one, 2.4 million. And uh, let's see if Pedro, you know, all sorts. Of, sometimes maybe get a little gun shy, right? You're like, all right, uh, I just bluffed off a lot. I had this table in complete, absolute lockdown. Still have it in really good shape, but do I want to just be ripping around light, light, light hands? And he does check. Future me has to feel good about that. At the same time, the hand's not over, right? There's cards you could lose to and also cards that you could get bluffed off here on the river. So this is not a very comfortable spot either for future of me. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he decides to go for a small bet here or if he decides to just check back and hope to get the showdown. Um, obviously, it merits to both approaches. So we'll see what he does. Interesting. Well played. I like that. I think that yeah. that's that's uh, in the moment probably the best play, but it's not an easy one to make, right? It just hurts if you just get check slammed there and you don't know what to do. It's it's uh, very tough. And we're getting another matchup here with some big hands and some country men there, the Brazilians. And and man, look at my guy. Google me, Jeff. All right. Fair enough. Hey, Ram, you noted, bro. I see it. I see it. I will. I will do that. And I, I'm rooting for you over there. You Definitely seem to have uh, a good approach in the game. Jack's ace king, though. Big moment. Ace on the flop. Pablo covers. Pablo has another ace, but really what changes only is that one card. Aram can't believe it. Is it not paint? Is it quads? No, I thought that, but either way, it's not a jack. It's a knockout. 2.9 million over to Pablo Silva. That is a pay jump. That is a knockout. Well done, Rodrigo. And man, 5 million in GG poker earnings. Going to be over a million in super. Millions earnings alone, so a very respectable player there and another result to the talented Brazilian. 45th overall ranking on Super Millions, so congrats, and we'll see you again, I am sure. And as it stands, let's see, do you know any let's, – let's talk about winners here to start the final table. On Season 1, we had Ole Shemians won the Super Millions. That's the only player that won on Season 1 here. On Season 2, Pablo Silva's won once, Ole Shemians won once, so we have a two-time winner – an Ole that still remains. And then we have a Pablo Silva has won once. Other than that, no one else here has won. So we might have a new winner for the Super Millions. Pedro Garagani is, has 747,000 in winnings in season two and 700 in season one. So a regular for sure. Very capable player. Been in many of these situations and has scored for a lot of money. But this would be his would be his first Super Millions title if he can take it down. And another spot here where Pablo has a pretty good hand to be continuation bluffing with. Has queen high only, has the diamonds, and he is against Future Me that has Jack Queen off. And interesting sizing and spot. Future Me does have the best hand, but how can he know it, Mike? Just has to get out of the way there, right? It would be, be pretty ambitious to call there. I'm actually a little surprised he folded. I think, uh, you know, he beats all the bluffs. With that hand, he does block a lot of the bluffs, but uh, certainly, you know, not unreasonable. He knows a 10 is, is going to give him the best hand. Small bet. I think he could have taken one off for sure. Uh, but, you know, especially after he made the very large C bet, I believe, on the flop, uh, you know, it's uh, maybe a little bit uh, understandable that he felt like, you know, peeling with a gut shot was, uh, was not necessary. But I think I would have liked to see him peel one and, and fight for that pot, actually. Yeah, well, like I said, Mike, you're the expert, not me. I get it. I see how that makes sense. I think in the moment I would have folded myself, although I would have known that, yeah, it wouldn't be like the craziest call. But he's also, he's got 4 million chips, and he's he's kind of navigated a nice, nice final table so far, sitting with five players left, locked up 190,000 in a healthy stack. So 
He's got a game plan. And look at that. Plays a little coy on certain spots and then takes the King-10 offsuit into a light rebet, which, you know, 8-9 suited, attractive hand, but we really want to be peeling not really in this 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 moment. So nice nice pick up there for Future Me. You said you played with him a few times, right? This player, Future Me, you played with? Yeah, I played with him. Yeah, a bit, quite a bit on GG, I think. I played with him live uh, once or twice as well now. Um, I'm not going to give away any more intel than that, but uh, definitely, uh, definitely a strong player. Definitely a little uh, frisky there with the King-10 off 3-bet, but perhaps a little frustrated after the previous hand. Um, decided he wanted to pick up some chips and was able to get the 9-8 suited out. Pedro's yeah. in an interesting spot here now. He's decided to peel just the raise preflop, uh, which as the chip leader, you know, you can be a little bit more uh, liberal in some of these spots with uh, with your peels. Usually, obviously, as like the smaller, the mid-stacks, you know, calling queen nine suited out of the small blind is, is probably not a play you're going to want to be making as much uh, because of the ICM pressure. But as the chip leader, you can definitely you can definitely manage. And uh, he's going to go with the small block here, which I think is understandable. But uh, Ole's got a hand here that's going to have to call. And a uh, great card for Ole. I think he's very likely to end up bluffing and winning this hand on the river. Yeah, interesting river card for sure. Now, if Pedro decides to, I don't know how he could bet. So he checks. Now, Ole, though, with 1.9, 1.1 in the pot. Very, very interesting. Does he expect a 10 to fold? Does he go for the whole enchilada? Does he go big? Does he not have to go big? What, what do you like for a size here, Ole? I think with the ace of spades, I probably just like the big size. I mean, yeah, all in or like effectively all in. Uh, I don't really ex necessarily expect a 10 to fold but i also don't really necessarily expect a 10 to check the river that often um and hands like two pair or a set are going to be hard pressed to call you here uh, and those are hands that pedro can definitely have a bunch of the time so yeah i, I think it's just a strong play from Ole. i think he chose the right size here with with this hand um you know when he has the flush he definitely wants to bet all of it i think and you know if the guy does have a 10 that's uh that's great um so the sick part is hand, i think nope the the sick part is you're right right it's like you know getting a set or signing a full but i think pedro kind of deducing here it's sort of um one of those those things it's either all or nothing of it so it's like he's 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 actually he's tanking here you know the guy's a talented player he's got some results making a big hero call versus ole shemian on the bright light super millions it looks like it's crossing his mind this would be how, how unreasonable a call would this be though would this just be insane? I mean, this seems a bit out there, but... I, I think but. having the queen in his hand is, is pretty bad here. You know, the hands Ole is bluffing with are hands like king-queen, ace-queen. Um, those are like probably the two main hands that he's bluffing with here, right? So having the queen seems like very much uh, not good. Um, I guess he's blocking queen-10, which is a hand that Ole could potentially play like this, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. If he calls here, I don't... It's just because he... He spells something. He thinks something funny is going on. It's not for uh, any theory reason that I can imagine. For sure. Well, nice, nicely done, Ole. How many times are we going to say that in the Super Millions career? It's a lot. Very nice. Nice to see him go for it and take it down again, guys. Welcome in. Please hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying yourself. Let us know where you're watching from. I'm Jeff Gross. Mike Watson joins me today, and we are going to play to a winner as we are already down. To five handed today, 538,000 to first place. Fifth place gets 190,000. We have seen a uh, fairly quick amount of eliminations, although the stacks are, of course, deeper with the in relation to the blinds when it does move quickly. So, plenty of play left today. And Pedro went for the full run over. You know, he gets that king nine suited through, no one calls, or he hits the nine or makes a flush or a straight, which is a lot different, different um, shakeout as it stands. He still has a double, almost double second place lead, but. He's not in the quite just complete runover mode. So we see what goes on here with, with ARAM actually tied for second at the moment. There is things have tightened up a bit. And Ole actually finds himself on the shortest stack with five left with 2.7 million. Still plenty of chips to play. Yeah, we've got uh, Ole now as the clear stat, short stack, which, uh, 
you know, he's actually in a position where he can play a little bit because he's so far behind. Uh, you know, Aram and Pablo, future of me, all. Uh, oh, we're getting a lead here from Pablo. That's interesting. Uh, covering future of me on this low board, he's decided that he can uh, represent more strength. It'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. Uh, but certainly, you know, Pablo, Aram, and future of me are, you know, ideally they'd like to to wait it out a little bit. They're going to be a little bit more risk averse in theory. Um, but obviously Pablo not afraid to uh, to go after it a little bit here to mess around. And we'll see what future of me is, is thinking. I, I don't think he can fold this hand, but he's taking this long. Oh, he is going to fold. Okay. I mean, it, it's a difficult spot, especially with no backdoor flush draw. It's very difficult to, for you to continue. You're going to be facing a, a bet on the turn, maybe a lot of the time. How, what's your plan here to try to just show down ace high and win the pot? So I can understand the fold, but uh, yeah, frustrating spot, I'm sure, for him. Pedro now, with the ace four offsuit, definitely uh, a little bit out of line here, but I think as the chip leader, this is a pretty uh, normal open. And uh, we're going to get a three-way pot. And pretty good flop for Pedro. He may uh, he may just bet and take this one down. Got the gut shot. Got the back door. Got you know. Got a club. Um, Aram's got the two over cards. I think he probably wants to peel here, but he's just not uh, not going to want to mess with the chip leader that much in this in a three way pot, especially. Yeah, he actually had the best hand there too, the ace four. But nice, obviously, yeah. you know, semi bluffing takes it down and does get a good result versus the other players denying the equity and picking it up. And here, Ole gonna open ace king suited is not gonna allow a flop almost certainly in the small blind here. And Pedro, if it had gone blind on blind, would have been interesting. But as it stands, likely just gonna be a nice, nice healthy raise from future of me. Yeah, Ole, Ole's sitting still on 20 blinds, so plenty of play left. Not like he's critically short. We're, we are five-handed, gotten there, arrived fairly quickly. It, yeah, uh, give me the really rankings. Solid. Yep. Yeah, no, go ahead. This is, I was going to ask, like, the, the rankings in terms of currently what you think the best days of the week for poker are Sunday. Sunday, obviously, being the Super Bowl. The best, what what kind of, is it Tuesday is the next best day? What's sort of the, the pecking order of days of the week for, for quality online events that you play? Yeah, I would think it's, uh, it seems that Tuesday and Thursday are kind of the other days that have some bigger stuff. Uh, usually, I'd say, lately, I mostly just play Sundays, unless there's like a, a series of some sort on, and then I might get in on... Uh, on some of the other weekdays. But yeah, Sunday is just so far and away ahead right now uh, that you know the other days really only can compete when there's like a, a big series on somewhere. Pedro's getting after it here with the Jack 10 off. And uh understand it's really that. relentless. It's, it's in such a difficult spot for Pablo here already. You know, facing this big three bet, you know, King Queen offsuit is a strong hand. You know, normally you would be happy to continue with it, but especially as second place stack in this tournament. Um, not an easy one, but he's, he's uh, not ready to give up just yet. I'm a little surprised here that the Jack, you know, Pedro is definitely well within his right to, uh, to get very aggressive in that spot, but the Jack 10 off is a particularly spicy one, I would say. Again, interesting here. Pedro decided not to continuation bet, which I think you can see why he doesn't have a diamond. He's got no back door. Uh, and Pablo, again, Pablo could have, could have seen bat or could have, you know, could have made a bat, especially with the diamond in his hand, but elected to check back. So you know, we'll see if Pedro uh, ends up finding a way to steal this pot. Goes for 50 percent and pablo has to get away from it there if a diamond had come could have been interesting on how that might have played out or what happened but as it stands queen do suited on the button 10.7 million and the license to raise chip leader on the puck 5 million 2.2 million stack Let's see what he does come with the min raise 
And Ola here, I mean, he's going to defend, right? He doesn't have that much ICM pressure on him as the clear shortest stack uh, suited hand in the big blind against Vinray. I'd be very, very surprised if he folded here. But he's going to have a tough time, uh, you know, trying to fight on this flop. Yeah, we see check, check, queen high, still in the lead. Jack on the turn brings a possible flush draw, 615 in the middle. Ole doesn't have a winning hand. Checks again, and Pedro, you know, queen high yeah, could we'll, be good. It'll be interesting to see what he does for sure. Um, the check back, I think, on these middle paired boards, a 7 7, it is actually often something that you might uh, play, you might make. And he definitely could have bet the turn. Um, and now I think he's probably just going to have to check back that he's, you know, the queen high is probably too much showdown value given how much garbage he's likely opening on the button. I, I can't imagine he's going to be bluffing with queen high here. Yeah, uh, also he will check. Here. Check and win where you say maybe Ole could have, could have taken a stab or not really possible in how it played out. No, I, I don't think he... I don't think Ole, uh, wanted, you know, it, it likely would have worked, but uh, I think he probably just played the hand well. Doesn't seem like a particularly appealing combo. Didn't have a heart, um, you know. Just uh, Pedro can easily check back with like an ace or with various strong hands in that spot that are going to call. Uh, so you don't really get to go too crazy trying to bluff into the the preflop raiser on those types of boards, even when he does choose to check back. Yeah, well, Pedro's starting to chip up again, and no one has that big of a hand here. Ole with ace nine against the chip leader as a shortest stack. Definitely could be interested. Yeah, I wonder if he'll try to sneak through a, a small three bet or something here. I I can't imagine he's going to jam. I mean, I think he's just supposed to fold, and he does. Yeah, Ole's been very solid. I'll say he's 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 playing well. Definitely, uh, he's gotten a couple little out of line three bets and things through, but he probably spots where he you know he picked it well, and I uh, didn't think he was gonna. You know, get played back at at too much, um, and he's yeah, he's mostly just uh, played good, good, solid, you know, final table poker. And uh, if he can, you know, make some hands, maybe he can get back into this thing. Well, this could be could be his chance. Flops top pair, of course. Jack ten with a spade, two overs actually has a, has a ton of equity against this particular hand. Let's see what Ole does here. Six fifteen in the middle. Yeah, this should be an interesting, interesting spot for Ole. I uh, think there's a good chance he decides to check back, but he might also just continue betting. If he does, and you know, we've seen Pedro play aggressively out of position in spots where he has, you know, a decent, like kind of mid-strength hand. Would he do that here? It'll be interesting to see. But no, he's gonna he's gonna take the more typical passive route and just call, which I think makes makes sense. His hands. Kind of in a tricky spot at this stack size if he if he check raises and gets jammed on um it's kind of ugly so uh for ola here he is going to keep up the pressure so i think he just decided you know he doesn't really want to check back and face a big bet um he thinks he's you know very likely to have the best hand the seven is for sure after it goes check call on the flop is very likely to just be ahead uh so he's decided he's willing to go ahead put in a bet and difficult to see you know Pedro getting a very yeah, this good price is, here. This is curious. He, uh, he's we did see you're right. Pedro in similar spots. He, he, he showed aggression. And, he doesn't. and he when, when it was kind of like middling spots or semi bluffing, or just kind of getting the feel where he's at. But he's called down here but now. He has basically like the worst hand he could like, have. Right, Jack yeah. ten off. Trying to do anything here to win no the pot flush, no pair on the river. It'd be very strange. And he does check. Um, Ole gonna so quickly so check and happily. Check well, back. So much, interesting much spot. We just kind of got to see the equities. Uh, definitely need a charge a bit and, for for what the hand was. Yeah, now the stacks are evening up a little bit more. And Andrew didn't didn't want it. It's, 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 it's tough when you're out of position. You're drawing to not the nuts too, right? You're like, oh, I'm going to hit a spade and don't know if it's good. So that was a little bit of no man's land that Ole got to capitalize on there. Do it with the four deuce off. I mean, there's no rule that you have to run out for every hand or raise every hand. Holding up. So Pedro does does fold that one.
All right. My question is going to open up under the gun here. No, there's always that live player that you play against that's like very chatty, talks like an action player, you know, draws attention, whatever, but then just plays super tight, conservative, like just shows the goods. Gets like I can't hear you. Is that me or they're an action player? Or is that you? Aaron with like the little videos and stuff. Is is that what he's up to? Hello. You know, because we've seen him mostly play pretty conservative, good, you know, good solid poker, but definitely haven't seen any like big bluffs really from him so far. So this is what I'm wondering now. You know, are these videos a strategy move or is he just uh, here having a good time? Well, something. I can't hear I can't hear Mike and I can't know if you guys can you hear me? Let me see. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that is unfortunate. So I don't know. I will call I'll call the action here for a second then if you guys can hear me. Ace five Jack Queen. Pretty sick turn. Uh something's wrong with the sounds. I can hear you now, Jeff. Oh, here we go. We are back. We are good. So Ace Five, look at this turn card, Mike. Ace Five and Jack Queen. Nice check back there from Pedro. Pablo uh, is is now kind of in a dreamy spot, right? He's got the the nut five check back turn. He's got the Ace of Heart. The hearts do come through, but he's probably not worried about random hearts, right? If the guy had like Queen Ten of Hearts, if Pedro had, he might might see about the continuation of the turn he goes for 620 and this is a yeah snap call can't can't imagine folding nice sizing nice hand for pablo gonna tighten the gap a bit there up to about six million and 10 million just under 10 million for pedro so the brazilians are one and two right now with five left and aram who's been been a little quiet all of a sudden he's over five million he's been active on the video feed he is sitting nice in third place but anyone's game anyone's game as i say that he gets dealt in and ace 10 gonna open and a welcoming opponent in the back he has got nines for pablo they are fairly deep gotta imagine he's gonna flat we saw the nines go for a three bet earlier when pedro three bet and put himself in a weird position got the bluff that river by the end of it but here it is going to be a flat we see a flop ace 10 is got the got the best hand all of a sudden out of position does check it over to pablo yeah i imagine we'll just see uh check back here most likely from pablo no he is gonna go ahead and try to just fold out some air nines obviously could be the best hand here a lot of the time uh and I assume Aram is just going to call, and it'd be interesting to see if uh, if Aram can get a new value here on the river. So this this seems like a nice, it's a good play too, and and get the free turn here, right? You bet, you now don't have to call a bet on the turn. You set the price, and you get a river card. I think that's like a yeah, makes a lot of sense. As as we see it, he's going to get a very confident card to bet. He makes his top two pair. He has a nut flush blocker here and he is certainly going to be betting i'll be curious though the sizing and pablo's hand doesn't look so strong right you would expect to see ace jack ace queen betting on the turn again most likely but he does go for a large bet and pablo not not much to stew over there does show the ace of clubs it's a powerful card good have card to have and... show there but <laughs> yeah he's doing he's doing unconventional things all right, future of me on the button. Going to have a little bit of tough timing here as both players might be interested. Pedro's been showing a propensity to three bet these type of spots and hands and put pressure on a stack. He flats and area. I'm actually going to get to make a nice squeeze here with a, a very welcoming ace king offsuit here, maybe about a million and just all of it. The full enchilada says, hey, I'll pick up 550 plus my blind back and... We'll move on to the next hand. So he is still at six million. Likes the ace of clubs. We can start to figure figure that out. It's a good hand. The blinds are up 70 at 140k. Definitely a good card to like. Powerful card in Nolan at Holdem. And here it is, another blind on blind area at the bottom of the range. Giving the the lowest stack a walk feels wrong, but let's see if he goes for a limp or if he's just gonna gonna give it up. 
or raise. Could he raise? Probably not raising. Let's see what he's what he's got up his sleeve. Yeah, I'm not sure this uh, situation is extreme enough that he wants to start attacking uh, with the six three offsuit. Ole is the shortest stack. You know, certainly there's still ICM pressure on him, but not not so much to an extent where you feel like you can start running him over with a hand that bad. I don't think. Well, Ole does a, show him a club, lets him know he's he's got two cards each hand as well. He is going to go ahead and see an open of king eight. And Pablo in the big blind got a, got a good hand here. But again, one of the stacks where he is not really looking to play a massive pot. Expect, you expect the flatter. Is, that, is, it, is, it, is it ace queen is where it's just too good? Ace jack call? Or do you think three betting knowing that the opponent's range is so wide? Is that a mandatory call? Or do you think three bet makes sense sometimes there? I think it's just probably call. Yeah, I think he needs to be uh, to be very tight for value there. Basically, I mean, he could three bet some ace jack off and fold fold to you know more action being put in the pot. But I think basically he's going to be super super polar and wants to defend even some very strong hands so just so that you know he's able yep. to defend post flop because you know, he's, he is going to be calling with a lot of weak stuff too. So you need a little bit more good stuff in there where you you do have some strong hands to call down on on various types of runouts. Absolutely. Well, here it is. Five on the turn. Six, three, three, five. Check. Pedro with the king eight off. Or a board that the big blind definitely could hit pretty hard. This is, this is a spot where, yeah, it's uh, you could be in some big trouble. You do check back. Both players have a heart. The ace of hearts, a key one. Seven comes in, and Pablo does have the best hands. He's able to get to a showdown. It's kind of a weird spot where he decides to check, and Pedro... King you know, eight. Interesting, Pedro, with the eight of hearts here, if he will try to to make a move. And you should know that Pablo is very likely to have ace high or like uh, maybe like a five or a six or some you know relatively weak hand here. And even a five or a six might try to go for a blocking bet some of the time. So we will we will see. Yeah, he does go for it. Uh, and Pablo's Pablo's got some options here himself. You know, with the ace of hearts in his hand. Um, I just bolts right away. I mean, calling would be very ambitious. Jamming against that bet size would be super ambitious too. But you know, he certainly had options there. Yeah, interesting hand. Very interesting hand uh, on the sizing there. All right, well, we're back to blind on blind. I've seen a lot of that today. King four of clubs, eight six suited. Welcome everyone in the chat. Thank you guys for watching. See, let us know where you're watching from. I know Mike is. Joining us from in Canada, I believe, and I am in Miami, and Pablo is all in. That's what he's got. He is shipping it in on the Irish flag, though, and it is. Pablo also seems to have a very, um, he's had a nice game plan. He just kind of seems to, he, he's, he's been sturdy, been strong, seems to be making good decisions, keeps his health, stack healthy, and he is a Super Millions winner before and really, really talented player. So let's see if he's able to finish off a nice final table campaign today of course five left a lot of money up for grabs ace eight off here likely does fold there a little surprised by that yeah that's uh definitely i would say a surprising fold certainly he's he's probably wary of pedro being in the small blind but uh the ace, you know having the ace is nice in those spots you know a lot of the hands that pedro is gonna come after you with are probably gonna have an ace in them as well so blocking that ace is usually a, a nice hand to open with and not much happening on this flop. Yeah, here's distribution. One of the things fun about doing final tables, you get to watch kind of cards, how the distribution of hands are. It's obviously, it's hard to make good hands, make get dealt good hands. Even here, we see no player with even an ace, nine, 10 suited, sort of the prettiest looking hand. And Pablo with a little bit of internet, this connect. We saw this last week at the Super Millions where there was some internet issues, some legitimate problems, and it's never fun to disconnect in a high stakes, never any tournament, but if a final table, a lot of money up for grabs. Hopefully Pablo is able to get his 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 stack back and his 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 time bake back. Only shows a nine ten suited loud and loud and proud. It is going to we are going to keep it rolling here as we see five-handed poker. This is this is Pedro kind of – Pedro's been opening so wide. Three, four off, though, not going to be it. And we'll see another – oh, look at this. Blind on blind, sitting out. So Ole Breeze on the pot, it's his. He is 
time banking here a bit and raises, but looks like Pablo yeah, did get that back in his spots. You know, as Ole, I think, you know, you'd like to do the etiquette and like wait, try to give him a chance, but you don't want to blow your time bank there either. Uh, I don't know, if, you know, how well Ole and Pablo know each other as well. So you don't know if the situation would reverse, would he extend the same courtesy? Um, but yeah, really, really frustrating, obviously, to to be sitting out for Pablo. I mean, you know, all these folded hands are are costing him a lot of equity. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's extremely frustrated right now. King ten off here probably would have just gone right through with a raise. Um, so definitely, you know, costing him some chips. But ultimately, it's not the other players uh, other players' fault. You know, and it's hard to ask them to to blow their time banks in this format to, to try to help them out, you know? Yeah. Future me showing good sportsmanship. To. Yeah. It's, it's, you see that a lot. I'd say it's very rare. You see guys, you know, playing like yeah, trying to speed up or take advantage, there. but yeah, some good sportsmanship. 1251 on Pablo's clock, but the disconnect clock is out. So he is officially sitting out. It does look like the players are trying to play relatively on the slower side, taking some time back without burning their, their own shot clock. Although there's been some offerings of slow play, but then not everyone's doing every hand, but yeah, it's, I mean, look, it's, 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 it's just a tricky spot. So we hope he gives the internet back as, as we see it though, blind on blind King nine, six, five King nine going to open up a Ram with a six, five offsuit. And he is also taking a bit of time. So yeah, cool. Cool to see. How, how, what, is, is there any the story that stands out? Yeah, you think he's going to defend? Well, we've seen him defend the 8-6 off right at the beginning of the final table, and this is a little bit bigger raise, and, you know, I think he's got a little bit more pressure on him here because he is the second-place stack right now, I believe. I'm not, not sure how much Pablo has, but he's certainly the second place of the people that are not sitting out. So uh, I assume after he starts doing the you suck thing that he's probably not going not gonna to call anymore. But he seems like he probably wants to. Yeah, well, we have a treat today with Mike Watson in the booth. He definitely knows his way around the high stakes and also knows a lot of his players. So getting to get some insight into how he approaches final tables, approaches poker. And we are here again. Five handed, although only four players currently dealt in. Appreciate you guys watching at home. Get that thumbs up button. If you are enjoying the show, please hit that and then be ready for the giveaway. It'll be $50 or $100. We'll put a keyword in at the kind of end of the show three-handed I'll, I'll tease it and then we'll we'll give someone that we've seen a few winners already in the chat here if you don't have a gg poker account you could always pick a friend's name or find someone or someone you know that has a gg account gift it to them or split it with them you know so if you do not have a actual account if you're in a location you can't have a gg account a jurisdiction that is still you know you're, you're welcome to put in a screen name or a, a username and uh yeah we'll uh We'll do that again as normal at the end of the show. What? Who else do you have, Mike? So you have Pedro and you have Future of Me. And do you have Aram too? Uh, yeah. And you have Ole and Pablo, right? Okay. You so actually got, took Ole ahead of Future of Me. Future of Me had more chips, I think, but you uh, you wanted Ole, which is uh, I can get that. Yeah. And then I think I had, yeah, yeah I remember I, I had to take Aram after that because. Uh, He's the guy. He had trips at the time when I selected him. He's the guy that uh, I just picked mid-hand when he was about to win a nice pot. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, that's right. That's exactly Any edge, exactly. Any edge. Hey, it's 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 getting tougher out there, man. You gotta you gotta do it. Pablo is is uh, is he back? I think he's back. Is that right? King nine doesn't say okay. sitting out, so I think he did get his, he got his net back. We're good. We got the full five players with their with their clock and we are going to be back playing five handed. So Pablo, after sitting out a few hands, maybe checking what hands he folded and just getting right back into action, kind of an uncomfortable spot until you flop trips, King nine off, you know, you don't, there could be some dicey boards. This one is pretty straightforward as it turns out, really nothing immediately dangerous for his hand. Of course, there are some straight draws possible. So let's see what Pedro wants to do here. Doesn't even put a small bet out on the nine, nine, 10 board. Checks back and now Pablo with 717 in the middle. 
Seven, eight would be a straight. He has a spade. He actually has, you know, got to feel comfortable in his hand here. That's 420. Yeah. Yeah, I was curious to see the size. So he could have potentially gone for a very large bet, but I think at the at the final table, you know, we probably are less interested in playing really, really big bet sizes. So that's 60%, and uh, it gets called. Pedro with the, the gut shot, ace high, going to feel compelled to, you know, keep him, keep him in line for at least one more straight. And it will be interesting to see uh, how Pablo decides to approach this river, at least uh, in terms of sizing, you know, when the queen spades completing... Completing a lot of hands, but certainly, you know, not so scary that he's uh, going to not feel confident that he has the best hand. Is that? I mean, is he just trying to target like Jack Queen, Queen King there? Like, what? What? What is that? That uh, that that bet size? I mean, he's got a very strong hand, but some stuff comes in. He blocks flushes. Uh, are you? Are to me, I don't know. That just seemed like not like that. He's scared. He doesn't have the best hand, but the sizing there. What is he expecting to get called by that he beats? Well, he's just saying, hey, I've got a nine or better. Um, and, you know, I could be bluffing. So if you want to call me with a 10 or a queen or certainly, you know, very lots of queens in Pedro's range could easily have checked back a hand like queen jack, king queen, or even a hand like, yeah. you know, queen eight. Um, very possible. Even eight, ace queen, of course. So lots of queens. But even, you know, he could check back some strong hands as well himself. You know, checking back a hand like, say, pocket aces or something is uh, probably, you know, within the realm of, of possibility. So... Um, definitely, you know, it makes sense. I think as Pablo, you're probably, uh, you're about, oh, Pedro's getting after it here. Wow. Well, this is not good timing, especially Aram, but it is, it is a, you know, it's not a super comfortable spot if you want to flip, right? Let's say just guys, ace, queen suited, ace, king, and you flip or somehow you're cooled. But it turns out that not the case in a big pickup for Aram. But yeah, if he had turned over Ace King there, Ace Queen, it's uh, you know, that would have been. Yeah, I mean, certainly, I think it's really just Ace been... King. Like for Pedro to four bet call Ace Queen there would be incredibly out of line. So, right. Um, but certainly, yeah, if you run into Ace King, and even the Ace King, you know, Ace King obviously might just go all in as Pedro there. You know, it's. But yeah, if you run into Ace King, you're you're not happy about it. But uh, I think good play from Aram, realizing, you know, that flatting the four bet there, you know, it, it isn't a good option, right, with that hand. Like, you just have to put it in if you're beat, you're beat. Um, and you expect to pick up the pot a lot of the time or sometimes run into a hand like Ace-King, uh, where you're flipping anyways. And uh, again, just going for the, the big size here with Ace-King offsuit, and I guess future of me... No, he's, yeah, we're still, so he had 25 big blinds. So that was a pretty big shove. I um, would have expected him to probably induce even with the offsuit ace kings there, but we've seen him just go for it with ace king a lot, just put the money in and say, give me this pot. I've got the hand. Uh, and, you know, it's not a bad approach at the final table. Yeah, eight, six aces, hammer lock, Pablo after that flop in particular. Is that, I think it's the best situation you can have aces to ace six off. I believe is the, is the hand. Maybe it's maybe I'm mistaken or ace nine off. It's one of those I think. And we saw that I think yeah, the World Series right. that famous hand with Sean Deep, right? He locks like aces to ace six all in pre flop or something for a huge amount of chips or ace six suited. I forget what that was, but yeah, that's uh, definitely how you draw it up. How you wanna how you wanna do it. And it is now a queen queen eight. I'm gonna go ahead and bet small and Ole. Yeah, he's got our hands. He's beating, but not really a great place to continue yeah i think uh pablo opening you know into a couple stacks that cover him he shouldn't be super wide and you know the a6 with no backdoor draws it's just it's not going to cut it and i imagine pedro will get back onto the three bet bandwagon here and it'll be very interesting to see what aram does uh if he's facing a, a three bet here Certainly has a reasonable candidate to go for the cold four bet. Um, but, you know, he really doesn't want to play a big pot against Pedro here. And he did, you know, he does decide to take the conservative route, which uh, I think is. I'll tell you what, Future Me has not had, not had a dream final table, right? It's just kind of like every time he opens, he seems like someone has a better hand. He's had to get out of the way. He did get a nice King 10 offsuit three bet in that picked it up. 
all in all, he's been pretty quiet and really hasn't got a lot of great hands and sort of just dealt dealt in when opens that he gets three bet on. Well, uh, I, I would say so. He's got to actually feel okay about having three million still in the game, five handed. He really hasn't hasn't had a chance to spread his wings so far. And of course, this is a very you know, it's a tough lineup. There's some great players here. Guys are playing aggressive too. I'd say this has been a pretty active final table with people going for it in a lot of spots. Definitely, yeah. I mean, we haven't seen people really, aside from, I guess, Aram. Aram's made a lot of uh, tighter preflop fools, but we've seen a lot of people sort of opening hand, opening the good hands when they get them, um, you know, not worrying too much about the ICM considerations. And, uh, you know, guys, yeah, guys are trying to, guys are trying to accumulate some chips. You know, everyone's certainly aware they want to move up in the payouts, but Guys are definitely uh, are going after it. And, you know, Pedro's got another candidate here. Will he go after Ola again? And he does. Uh, but King 8 suited. And, uh, you know, Ola's got a tough tough spot here. Um, you know, my guess is that he's probably supposed to fold. But if he senses that Pedro's just too far out of line, you know, the ace-jack's a hand that he could make a stand with. Wow. And, um, again, you know, this, this may not seem yes. like such a incredible play but really like again the timing like to just be right you know like this guy just turns over ace king or queens and you're just behind or whatever but like and, and the thing is pedro's gone for it so much it's almost like at some point you're just like he's gonna have something you know like he's he's gone for it a lot he's he's been very aggressive so uh ole up four million all of a sudden future of me is your short stack on three million and pedro had like 12 or 13 million when he shoved the king nine suited i think something in that in that vicinity. And now he's got 7.2 and he's not slowing down. Credit to him. He really has kept the foot on the gas, but he's uh, he's up stuck, right? He's still the chip leader by a hair and he sort of feels like he's he's trying to trying to trying to he's just he, he's not he, he likes to be in control and he is his V pip is is high. He's putting a lot of money in the pot volunteer then here Aram the two chip leaders chance to tango here and Pablo's got a pair in the small blind as well. So let's see what happens here. Ole up to a newfound 4 million chip stack. Yeah, this will be interesting to see how Pablo chooses to play this. Um, you know, I think call is kind of the obvious play, but you usually don't do a lot of calling out of position against two players at the, at these final tables. You know, the, it's very difficult to realize equity with your two eights here. Uh, and the range is, you know, like Aram is not supposed to be three betting too, too much against the other chip later. Like he can be flatting some very, very strong hands in that spot. Um, Aram's check back here, the ace queen, a little tricky, but certainly fine. Uh, and will Pablo, we've seen Pablo with these mid pairs that, you know, he likes to kind of probe and try to sort of find out where he's at to some extent. Uh, and that's what he's going to do here. But uh, I think Aram should realize that he basically has the nuts. Uh, I mean, it's not even clear if Pablo would necessarily call the sixes preflop. So certainly, I think Ace Four suited, no chance. I imagine Pablo is going to find a fold here. Be interesting. Maybe he blocks, but no. Um, and then Aram's probably going to bet pretty big. And I would imagine that Pablo will get away. Hertz got there as well. So there's not any really obvious bluffs. Um, certainly, you know, sometimes people find bluffs that you don't expect, but this seems like a, a difficult spot. Yeah, just now two million and, and a really safe run out for for Aram. Just gonna go ahead and slam in a seventy five percent chip bet, and Pablo will get out of the way correctly. Eight point five, and uh, is that a, does he save that or is that a, is he just going live and doing it differently every time? I mean, he's he's got that. He loves his artwork. He made this red line graph that he is very proud of. Uh, I, I don't know if we can get. Get that attributed to if that's him or what. And Ace is here for future me. We we're just saying he hasn't really got dealt in or had an amazing situation, but he does have a 
good spot here with aces against all A's suited wheel ace four suited pops it up to 800k goes a little smaller than not really that yeah, well he's got, the, the, size hand. The, got the hand he can bluff with here you know this is the type of hand that if he was gonna if he was gonna bluff jam this is the type of hand he might do it with so you know, he just he, got one through with the ace jack offsuit maybe he's feeling it you know wow he also saw that the king 10 probably came on loop from the stream saw that earlier the small blind light one ace four suited does get on the dance floor. It needs still some runners. That is a potential chop turn. Not a diamond. That's super sweaty. So can he fade? He does. Big, big, big moment for future of me and for 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 our dinner bet, for everyone involved, only as well, the fans at home rooting for him and for the 50 versus the $100 ticket. Pedro's sort of the best bet on that at the moment. Only those still has a million chips. Hard to count them out. Future of me picks up where he left off it's gonna work look at this momentum he's gonna just pick up the blinds and he's gets aces to ace four suited holds and he is on the way to 6.3 million ole is critically shortest stack five left so he's been here before ole knows how to maneuver yeah he never count ole out that's for sure but uh you know going for ole ahead of future of me that uh that decision is looming large right now for you Oh, 10 7 decides to shove. King 4 snap calls off to the races. 7 is saying hello, or is it hello or goodbye? It is potentially a river card. It is, oh, paint, but not the right paint. Ole will be out the door, and a ram is going to deliver the knockout. And I'll tell you what, if you have a choice at the table, no, no, uh, no, no salt at a ram, but you're happy to see Ole go out, right? That's nice. You're down to four-handed pay jump, and the chips consolidate. So everyone at the final table now guaranteed a little more cash, a little closer at five hundred thousand dollars score, and world-class player out the door. Second ranked overall on the Super Millions. Very impressive stuff. And golfer mm -hmm. clap for for Ole out there. Another another nice showing. But we are down to four. A ram is your chip leader at home. If you're keeping track, he's got nine point five million chips right now and future me is oh, got boy. a problem oh boy is right man wow wow this is they got around the same stack and they've been aggressive pedro this is one of the things about being so aggressive now granted Jax is obviously a cooler but you're gonna have people to maybe take offense or put in a little lighter in this particular spot hard to imagine wow, wow. the uh, guy three bets the guy three bets everything and now doesn't light he's he's messing around and he wants to just flat this is actually a crazy situation that just happened. I can't believe like, it. Uh, that, that's shocking. I mean, Aram overcalled too, did he? Jeez. Uh, yeah. His hand is Can definitely you talk not me going the way what, that we were expecting. I've been so impressed with Pedro, and I've been so impressed. Like, he's also playing aggressive, taking control. Can you explain why you would want to play so aggressive and then actually get a hand that you have it? Like, I would think that's, like, the easiest three bet of, of, of life. I get flat. You're also inviting the big blind in to like go multi-way, you're not in position that, I, I just can't understand this. Yeah, uh, I think it's a, I mean, obviously like looking at the cards, it's easy to say it's a huge mistake, but I really do think that was just a, a strange moment where he just decided to make a really, a really fancy play. Um, and, oh, oh boy. Look at well, he's this. a genius now. Yeah, he's now a genius. Uh, just decided to save his stack. That was brilliant. Pedro is playing incredible. Uh, but yeah, wow. uh, you know, I think he was obviously hoping to induce a squeeze from Aram, the new chip leader. Maybe he thought, you know, this guy just got the chip lead. He's going to want to really go after it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, come on, you've, you've got aces. Like, you can defend against the squeeze with, you know, weaker hands than, than aces. You don't need aces to, to worry about that. So this is going to be interesting. Got the... How big will future of me go? Yeah, he's also got the club but i mean just thinking i think yes they'll be interesting we'll, we'll kind of get to know what he's thinking that pedro has with the sizing you know like does he ever try to like get them off a chop but i guess he has two jacks so he's probably not that worried about him having a jack although it's very interesting i think the sizing will be yeah, he doesn't think he has very much I maybe a two little pair. bit too small here i'm not sure yeah i mean certainly i think pedro has to call this size but uh, this is a very small bet. I think he, you know, is costing himself a little bit of value here. Um, 
you know, I, I think in his head, he's thinking, I've got the jack of clubs, maybe I can, you know, somehow induce uh, a bluff raise or a bluff jam. Or maybe he just thinks like, this is the only size that he can get, get called by a hand worse than the jack. You know, it's understandable, he would think Pedro is not going to have, you know, like a hand like ace king or ace queen here very often. Uh, so maybe he's thinking he needs to price in hands like king 10, queen 10. But uh, I mean, it does seem like a little bit too small. Like he can find hands to bluff with here, I think. You know, a hand like king nine, certainly a hand he could bluff with. Um, interesting spot. Very interesting hand all around. I just, uh, it's crazy, right? Because it's like so wild that he actually saved himself so many chips how it ran out is and the ace on the river was just a bit of a it's a bit of a crazy shakeout we see nines with nine million and the chip lead aram here likely going to be taking yeah, it upstairs although to just raise oh he's done some unconventional stuff yeah i mean he should be raising a lot of hands in this position uh you know pablo is the shortest stack but still you know is deep enough that has to be a little bit conservative, doesn't want to bust out here. And, uh, you know, the nines are strong enough to get all in with preflop. So I think he should be very happy to raise and just go all in here. Respect to Pablo, snap fold, doesn't posture. Aram, uh, oh, look at that. We are going to get a quick break and look at this. Let's take a look and take you over to a message from Club GG. Shortly, Mike. Shortly, we got it. We got a behind-the-scenes look there. There it is. Okay. Oh yeah. I gotta keep an eye in and see if it is the Jack Four this time. What's going on? Yeah. I think it was. They even take. They took the same board. Oh man! That I didn't catch any of that. Did you? It's, uh, it's okay. the hand. Oh, yeah, it's it's That's nice. Oh, they put three is no good. All in. Yeah. All right. Well, there it is. We got to see a look at the world clocks in the background. See a little bit of the production side. We got to see the Jack Four replay. I saw Kevin Martin and Peely with that costume. I don't know if you caught that. Pretty, pretty creative. And you know, Mike, this is now our second break. We're getting ready to queue up the giveaway, guys. So please hit that thumbs up and then be ready for the keyword to enter. But I don't want to, you know, feel free to say as little or much as you want. Do you have any takeaways? Is it? I was following it fairly closely, the Jack Four situation and Joey Ingram and Doug and these guys doing these deep dive detective work and bringing a situation to light. But I didn't really see how it all wrapped up other than there was a lie detector test. It got passed. It seems like she was playing. It sort of brushed under. You know, there was something about a, a football game where she was on CBS with the guy. Like, I've seen little bibs and blobs. It's hard to follow. Do you have any any sort of, like, overall summary if you were just someone's watching what happened and where it's at now do you is there anything like you would say how you feel on it or, or not no comment uh yeah I, i'm not gonna go too into it i'll just say the first thing is like of course if you're in garrett's uh shoes and that hand happens like your first thought of course should be that something's not right that you just you know that you maybe yeah. just got cheated um you know if you're playing in like you know if, if people like really don't understand that then i hope you're playing in like really good casino games where everything's on the up and up because you would be a target in uh in any kind of sort of underground game uh where there could be something shady going on uh you, you have to be suspicious that's all i'll say for sure i haven't followed it super super closely i can't be bothered to watch 20 hours of joe ingram stream right um, yes it exactly. seems like nothing that's like sick. super super um convincing either way came out so you know that that's uh that's where i'm at I just say that i think the hand is super super suspicious but i haven't seen anything that remotely resembles like yeah i mean there was bounties put really out really too right evidence. there there was some like so big bounties put together too there was like some bounties put out right. for information and stuff so like which is you know also um anyway that's it so well there you go club gg like I said, great, great platform. If you're going to do some play money or friend games or run stuff with no fees, and that's all I'll say on that. And um, it is uh, nice marketing, nice commercial. I didn't pick it up on the first run. I just caught the Jack 4 at the end. But they had the characters and the, the whole deal there. But as we see it, Future of Me is fighting for that chip lead with $9 million about tied. And Pablo now short stacked. And Pedro, who was chip leader for so much, this final table finds himself in third. And Future of Me, they say it's not so fun when the bunny's got the gun. 
and he is now turning up the fuel. Different situation. Will Pedro just decide, you know what, this is too convenient that he's three betting me now as the chip leader. I have a pair. It's four handed. Do I want to surf it in? But do I really want to put it at risk for the, the difference? And cheer, kudos to the future of me. Nice play. And I think that will earn him just, you know, almost tied for the chip lead there. Are you surprised? based on how Pedro plays he didn't slam it in or just because of Pablo's stack, not, not the moment to take a risk with fives. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, he probably made, you know, the, the standard correct play there most likely, but uh, you know, Pedro, we've, we've seen him go for it. We've seen him be aggressive. If he was to just say, whatever, forget it. I'm, I'm just going for it here. I wouldn't have been too surprised either. Um, but, you know, I think probably taking the conservative route there with Pablo so short is, is likely the, uh, the best play, you know. Yep. All checks out. All right, guys, we'll get ready because the second we lose another player, we will get that giveaway queued up. If you guys are enjoying the show, please hit the thumbs up. Helps us a lot. We are live. Got over a thousand watching right now. We are playing for five hundred thousand dollars USD. Five thirty eight to first. We are four handed. Two forty six locked up. Very important. Super millions day today, and we are going to see a new. Super Millions champion, unless Pablo Silva can take it down. He has won. Ole Shemin had two titles, only players that had a title in either season one or season two. And at the moment, Pedro does have the best hand on the turn, seven, nine, being a pair of seven, seven, deuce, four, jack. Aram has got King High. Could be the best hand. Does check backboard pairs. Got to feel good about his hand. King High being good as played, but we'll see if Pedro goes for any kind of blocker bet or any type of bet here. He also, he's got to feel very confident in his hand. Yeah, he should. And yeah, he's going for a good bet size here. You know, some people would block in this situation or, you know, certainly the deuce card that, you know, the big blind is more likely to have a deuce, but oh, and Aram does make the call here. That's, uh, you know, I, I can understand it, the king of clubs, but uh, that five of hearts seems like a, not a great card to have a lot of, Pedro's bluffs are probably going to have some small cards like that in them. So, uh, but understandable. You know, we've seen Pedro be very aggressive, go for it a lot. So I think we can understand why uh, Aaron might have been suspicious there. Yeah, he's too suited, puts the pressure on, takes it down. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how much pressure Aram applies. You know, he spent the whole final table kind of as a smaller middle stack. You know, he's never really been that short, but has, you know, always had to deal with Pedro opening all these hands, three betting all these hands before he has to act. And, you know, he's been playing, you know, pretty snug, pretty conservative, but well. And uh, now that he's one of the chip leaders, it'll be interesting to see if he's got that extra gear, if he can really uh, start to apply the pressure, you know, especially against Pedro, who's, you know, we saw he's stuck in that middle stack range. He has to be a little bit more conservative, uh, or you could just, you know, get dealt jacks. That, that's going to work too. That is going to be helpful, and Pedro's not going to like when he gets played back at here. So this is uh, this is one of those situations where, <laughs> man, Arams really wow. came in early today. Yeah, wow. I feel like that's a recorded thing. Just... Maybe he's just going live, live every time. It looks like it's like he recorded I, it and saved it. Is that what happened? Yeah, it's like the same exact thing. Wow. I was going to say, against a normal three bet, Pedro would be uh, in a very difficult spot. But I think against this jam, I mean, I can understand wanting to call. But uh, I think it's, you know, especially after he does the whole red line and all that stuff thing, I, I'm pretty suspicious. I think Aaron might have a hand here. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's it's just troubling because you know you're getting taken advantage of a lot, but like at the end of the day, big fold does show it as well. Sport sportly like doesn't say wait for the delay, gives it and and you know like you said if he can <laughs> if he can go ahead and put some pressure on with him, we didn't get to see it's actually it's actually a bit of a hack there, Mike. You see that using the the video like you, I don't even do we get to see his whole cards. 
the next hand. I don't know. Queen Jack, Ace Four, though, all in. Pablo is short. He needs to connect with some paint on the river, or else we will be three handed and it is a nine so not gonna be you know what i'm saying he actually blocked his whole cards i didn't get to yeah, see yeah, that a little bit on the button I know kind of a, yeah, yeah. a little bit of a hack yeah all right well three-handed we're gonna do a giveaway i'm gonna put the keyword thank you for everyone who's hit the thumbs up already if you hit the thumbs up and you type gg mike we'll put that mike for so gg mike and then your username in the chat that will be activated for uh, I see pop. Look at that. Six million. Six point two. A former Williams super, super Millions. Super Millions champion in there. Three million in Super Millions uh, uh, alone. That is. Uh, that is. Hold on. Let me just get this keyword. So, guys, type GG Mike. GG Space Mike. And then your GG username for the giveaway. That is that. Hit the thumbs up button. Good luck to you. We will be a $50 or $100 ticket. Although it looks like it's more, more like a $50, right? Yeah, because uh, who it's got to be future. It's got to be Pedro. It's got to be. Or did we give him future? No, we had yeah, Pedro. They had Pedro. Yeah, you gave them future at the end. Okay, they do. So, so you guys are rooting for rooting for. Aram, I think. I feel bad. Aram's such a people. You know, he's a guy. He's a he's a social guy, and we got him pegged up against. Everyone's got to root for future or Pedro. But it's a fifty or hundred dollar ticket. Type it in. Hit the thumbs up. GG Space Mike with your GG username, and we will go ahead and pick a winner here once we get down to heads up or. Uh, we'll let it run for a couple minutes, guys. Get it in there. Hope you're enjoying the stream today. This has been a fun one. Big purse today. And Mike does a great job, of course. One of the best poker players to ever do it. No doubt about it. You can look at his resumes. Won a lot of stuff. Played a lot of stuff. $16 million in live earnings. Who knows online how much. Hard to keep track. So many different sites. So many years. But definitely got some earnings. King 10, King 10. Chop it up. Both players going to be happy with 319000 And Pedro... Not where he wants to be. I mean, you gotta, you can't help but look at the king nine suited, Mike. If maybe just min raises, doesn't lose many chips there. He still has twelve million. He's in control. It almost felt like a little rushed, right? Not like it's a huge mistake, but doesn't it just doesn't wasn't necessary. I don't think in the moment. Yeah, I tend to agree, and that definitely was the beginning of his downfall. You know, he could have saved whatever three million or two and a half million, whatever it was there. Uh, ended up doubling the player. That's immediately on his left. So. You know, I think that's one he'll definitely, you know, obviously any like big pot that like that you lose at a final table, you always kind of look back at and feel bad about. But uh, that might be one that, uh, you know, I don't know if he's going to lose any sleep about it. He seems like a pretty chill guy, but might be one that bothers him a little bit. Could be a good hand here, too. Would expect Pedro to peel and now... Uh, Good chance that he's gonna be able to steal this spot, I think. Yeah, ace three suited and jack 10, ace three is the best hand. Pedro, very critical time. He's not out of it by any means. They Each player has about two to one on Yeah, I think uh, I think I mean yeah. Man, this is this is still wide open, but he does go ahead and put some fires in a blocker bet there. Interesting little blocker bet, That's, uh, but it may work out. I mean, obviously Pedro would have bluffed if he checked. Um, Pedro may still, you know, may very well still raise bluff raise here, but perhaps not as automatic at this point against the bet. Now he still does. Small size, I think I like. Representing a hand more like two pair, for example, than uh, than like a flush or a straight, but that was enough to get the job done. Queens, nice pickup there for Man, we were just saying future of me was quiet. He he ultimately kind of got unlucky because he got cooler jacks to aces, but should have got more chips. If, if it just got three bet, it would have got in, and he would have got very, very lucky. But as it stands, he still is the current ship leader, and he is in blind on blind. 10-4, king four suited in the small blind. So Aram and future trying to see if they can find a way to heads up as they are 
currently healthy versus Pedro, but Pedro does pick up to 5.8 million. So anyone's game wide open here at blinds, as you see our 100 K 200 K. So there's a, there's a, there's still plenty of play King, queen, King five suited going to tango. Definitely some flops here where things could get interesting. Both players sharing that King and Pedro. Pedro, the only thing I was really curious about was the aces flat. Would love to know his exact thought process in that that moment. But as it turns out, worked out. But here it is. King five suited, king queen off. King queen going to go and see bet 20%. Pedro with backdoor king high spades. Could have the best hand as well. Does he ever get sticky? He, we see him three bet sometimes in spots like this. I'm sorry, check raise. Like check check raise or check call can't blame him for calling king high floats one has some good turns some wheel cards some spades but as it turns the six of diamonds so now it's a uh, it's interesting when it goes goes check call and now check check turn on the river king five it's sort of a weird spot where you like could have the best hand but you also don't expect to that much 1.5 in the middle sort of weird like you could check and get bluffed yeah let's check yeah i mean I just, I think he's like he's probably supposed to check. I mean, in normal situations, he's going to have hands like four or five, um, two four. You know, like like all the all the wheel gut shots and stuff. Um, and then he's even going to have hands like maybe even like queen queen jack with a diamond or some other hands like that. Uh, but you know, it feels really frustrating, obviously, when it, you check back and lose to a better king high. But I think that he does have a quite a number of other hands there that he could bluff with. So maybe uh, maybe not too big a mistake to not bluff. Yeah. King three suited nines. Pretty pretty strong hands here, blind on blind. Of course, nines super strong in the big blind. Um King three suited though. Probably interesting. It goes like seven, eight hundred K. There it is, three and a half BBs and yeah, King three suited. You know, this is out of all the limping hands. It's it's a, it's definitely a definitely a playable hand, though. When you get faced with that type of raise, I think we could see again all options here from Aram. Yeah, I would expect the call. Um, you know, the nines is interesting. You know, the two big stacks. You don't really want to play a big pot. Obviously, nines is a really strong hand, uh, but I have seen you know some situations where you do actually check back nines um, in similar situations to this. But of course, I think in general, just nines are a strong hand, making the pot bigger is great. And here I'm just gonna get out of it. It's interesting there with the king, the king three with the backdoor plus draw, I think is a hand he definitely could have tried to make a play with there. Um, but he decided to just take the conservative route. Interesting to see yeah. if Pedro decides to just take the obvious route and slam this in free, or uh, or just call. Just take the, the more obvious route. Yeah. Do, would you would you consider being so much shorter to just flat there, or three bet smaller instead of shove? Is that is that a pretty reasonable spot to do that with that hand? Uh, I think in general the big blind um, does a lot of a lot of flatting. Uh, with some of the mid pairs in that spot, even though they're obviously good enough to get all in with. Uh, the way the hands that the small blind is willing to call off with are not hands that you dominate. So um, like jamming is a little bit less exciting than it seems like obviously just like picking up the pot is great, but you'd rather pick up the pot with like your small pairs than like your mid pairs like eight that might just dominate a lot of the hands that he's bluffing you with. Uh, and then you have some unexpected strong hands post flop in a number of spots. Uh, so there is actually an argument for for flatting, uh, but you know, it's a very strong hand. Obviously, obviously strong enough to just go with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, king comes on a turn. Clubs possible. No player with the club. Ten three suited has literally nothing. Pedro decides to check it over. And let's see if, if Aaron wants to just try to try to go for a little stab here. No, he's not interested in fighting. And Pedro now on the river, 875 in the middle, has has a, a blind on blind, pretty strong, strong enough hand, although just sort of like, what are you getting called by? You chop even with the king. 
Maybe your opponent bluffs. Yeah, I think this is a good check, especially with the queen in your hand. Like the type of worst hand that you might get called by is a queen high type hand, uh, but you have a queen yourself, so I think you're better off inducing a bluff. And uh, Ram did not take the bait there. Yeah, yeah. Well, Pedro's chipped up a bit. Six million. He has thirty bigs folds. Queen eight off on the button. And uh, we're seeing a lot of blind on blinds. This is that very critical time of the tournament. Of course, almost a hundred thousand dollar page on about ninety five thousand difference. Yeah, we're getting to the here. the meat of it now. There's a lot of money on the line. You know, just moving up, moving up is another hundred k in your pocket. It, it's big money. So people are going to be going for it. They're going to want to win, but they're also going to be aware of that. Yeah, big difference here. And look at the 5-6. Has the best hand. Queen Jack, of course, two overs, gut shot. Going there, the ace pairs on the turn. And as plays, Queen High definitely thinks could have the best hand. There was really no, not a lot. Yeah, I don't know if, uh, let's see, Queen Jack, check, check. All the, yeah, so on the river, 875 in the middle. Doesn't seem like much of a reason to bluff here, but enough showdown. Just as played, at least. I don't think you get, are you getting a 5 to fold? I don't think that's played. No, I mean, this is definitely not a bluff. I don't know if he thinks he can value that or something. I, I don't understand this bet at all. Uh, but it may work. I mean, I've seen people make folds in these spots. I think, yeah, he did let it go. Yeah, that was a very confusing one. Um, so is he bluffing there? Do you think he's targeting a five? Yeah, or maybe off a, a chop. I'm not know. sure. I'm not sure if that was a bluff or a value bet in his head, honestly. Uh, that was very confusing. All right, well, king on king crime here. We got king three, king seven. No money put in additionally preflop. And we will be uh, choosing a winner shortly again. Type in the chat. If you did it already, you're good. And you are going to be eligible for a fifty or hundred dollar GG ticket today if you hit the thumbs up and you type in GG space Mike and then space your username. We will go ahead and pick a winner. I'll let you know who wins once we get towards the end of the show. Here we still got plenty of play left. Three three handed. Mike, do you review these type of tournaments and and study? Do you feel it's very valuable or is it just so different at a final table versus like how players play different stages where it's just like basically like any final table review. Like we, we find yourself watching some high stakes tournaments online and, and taking some notes and looking through stuff. Uh, yeah, I do actually. Uh, I haven't watched any of these super millions final tables in a little while because it's been so busy with uh, just the other poker schedule. But I think you learn a lot. Um, you know, the final tables of tournaments are where the money is the biggest. And, you know, it's also where the strategy is, you see the biggest divergence in the way people play it you know, because of the ICM considerations, everyone kind of has their own approach or their own ideas about how to play it. And so getting in there and, you know, just seeing all these hands with the cards up of how people are actually playing, what types of decisions they're making, uh, I think is actually very valuable. For example, we see Aram here now finding the 8-3 offsuit to uh, ISO raise. You know? This is uh, good to know because he'd been playing much more conservatively for the earlier stage of the final table. So, you know, seeing him actually find a play like this is saying, okay, you know, this guy's guy's not just like spamming spamming video emojis and then playing nitty, you know, like he he's uh he's going after it a little bit. And shows shows just <laughs> and shows, yeah. Just for fun. Good play. Gives himself a good play. Uh well, yeah, he's the chip leader right now, eleven million. And I didn't know you could do this. So what is this? You take a... You record something and save it to your own emojis. Like, is that is that a thing? I, I didn't realize. I thought it was like a live shot cam. Uh, I don't is know. I'm too a... much of a boomer to understand how this function works, to be honest. But uh, I've never used it. But yeah, I think I think both are options. I think the main one you see is pre-recorded, but I believe there is a live option as well. Um, yeah. Too, Whoa. Too much of this a boomer could, to know this could how get, that works. This could get saucy. I mean, this is good. future of me. And take it up probably up really big here, I would imagine. 1.6 was the number I had in my head. He beat me to it. And Aram is, um, man, he's weird how, like, in the sense that I feel like he's very aggressive, but when he gets ag aggression show to him, yeah, oh, man. I mean, I just can't imagine him folding, right, pre after the King Jack suit calls, and this is 
quite the flop for future me has to know it's nice right you just a king queen king jack you have hemmed up you have the ace of diamonds here he goes 700k and aram is it's going to be put in likely a very difficult situation of course there still is cards to come but at the moment he is in dire straits that card could save him yeah, yeah the diamond is nice that's gonna that's gonna help you know keep less money going into the pot uh you know, we had seen Aaron make some very tight folds pre-flop, but of course, I think the King Jack suited in this situation was way too strong. Uh, I'd like, yeah, I'd like to see Aaron make like a smallish bet here and then check back and, you know, preserve a lot of his stack. Uh, but he's not going to do that. And now, now he's going to face a big bet, most likely. I think he's going to have to pay it off. Although we have yeah, to like make two some, points. some folds. He's going to do like... 2.6, 2.8. Yeah. Future I mean, me. Maybe, maybe even bigger. Yeah. I've seen future go and well, let's see. Let's see what he does. He's got the key card. He knows he's not getting raised, right? So it's sort of just set your price. Right? You know, it's chance yeah. your beats, very unlikely, but like you get to just not get raised. So it's sort of like, all right, what do I want to try to tax and not have to worry about? Oh wow, see so he goes small, very small. Wow. Yeah, so I think he's thinking maybe he can get called by an underpair to the king. Um, I think he's also thinking maybe I can get this guy to raise me. Uh, and then, you know, with the Ace of Diamonds, he would feel confident making that call. Um, interesting. Yeah, that's so, an interesting yeah, thought, Yeah, definitely. Too. I can understand the bet, but uh, I'm not sure if that was necessarily the uh, the best size to go for there. Interesting to see yeah, he's queen. me decides to play back here at all. Definitely with the backdoor flush draw, some cards that kind of connect. They don't, you know, directly connect, but he turned lots of cards that he turns equity on here uh, as the big chip leader. I do think he might decide to uh, to attack a little bit. Yep, spot on. That's why they call him sir watts my man is got a plan and he is putting pedro to the test here very draw heavy board getting check raised gets called and this is one of those right these are one of those ones that fill yeah. in eight nine is this is actually one of the best cards probably right other than like the five six of clubs but the, this eight nines is straight now he actually does pick up double gutted on top of it and goes small because he says you know what if yeah. i have it this is this is he's got pedro in the cage a little bit here yeah, I mean, this is a very small bet, but I think that's the general right idea is to probably bet small here with, you know, the vast majority of hands that he would have. Uh, it's just a very good card for his range on the turn. And Pedro has a lot of ace high unpaired hands in his range that are going to be hard pressed to continue. Uh, and this will be an interesting one, you know, with the, the nine and the five, good call or very sticky call by Pedro against such a small bet. And, uh, I think future of me is probably going to have to to go for it here. Unload the clip here. Yeah, I mean he doesn't have some worse hands he can have in his range here, but I mean this seems like a pretty good one to go for. Yeah, and I mean Pedro can beat some things, but it. Uh, very difficult to see him making this call. Although we, we've seen him be very deliberate in these spots and he does always seem to be legitimately thinking about some of these hero calls. A lot of money on the line, 95,000. Well executed hand, future of me really putting on a nice show here as he caught going 17 million blinds are up 125, 250 guys. All right guys, when we hit once I will announce the winner here shortly, just before, you know, right when we get the heads up or before, we're going to give you a little more chance to win that ticket and we will be a 50 or hundred dollar ticket. Future of me is on your guys squad. So you guys got 20 million chips as well as Pedro, 20 million to seven in terms of it's a 50 or hundred dollar. And we just saw, I think one of the previous winners came in here and said that he did win. he got his $50 ticket cashed out 235 on the site. So yeah, love to hear guys using the free roll to their advantage and we are going to go to a flop here it is nine ten suited going to get no help as ace jack clearly the best hand so yeah welcome 
Welcome, everyone. Hope you're enjoying three-handed, guaranteed 319. And we are seeing Future of Me separate himself from the pack right now. This starts at 1.45 Eastern now every Tuesday. This is the final table from the Sunday tournament. A little bit of a, a juiced-up prize pool because of such a, the action going on on Sundays right now for all around online poker, GG poker in particular, as well as some other various places. So this is uh, this is definitely going to be some big Super Millions come up in the next next bit of time. And this is uh, going to get faced with an all-in. So this will be a nice pickup for Pedro with no showdown. Does get a yeah. open, and then he's just going to get to raise, take it down. Are you going to be playing the next few weeks online then? Is that your plan? You're going to be parked and playing, or is this... Um... Yeah, I think it'll be some time to play a bit and, you know, maybe take some time to study a bit more because it's hard to... Hard to really find any time to study when you're you're playing so many hours, you know. So I think it'll be time to do that, and then you know maybe take a little time away from poker too, chill a little bit. Um, you know, I feel like uh, barely been uh, barely been at home, I guess, for the last uh, few months. So it'll be nice to just uh, to relax a little. Yeah, that's 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 good. It's good at balance. Got to got to got to press and then got to sit back. Right now we are three-handed and definitely these guys are are excited to see if they're going to add their name to we will have a new super millions title holder that's that is that is for sure because none of these guys have won one before as we see aram down to six million all of a sudden and future of me with a pair of fours if he were to raise seems like a pretty good spot to go ahead and put the pressure on yeah i would expect we'd see the jam uh oh wow uh this doesn't seem like a play, but uh, this is out there. Yeah, it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey hey, Ram man. asked me to Google him. I'm going to have to check that out. If anyone else wants to Google that name and let us know if they find anything interesting. He just, but he he, was... he just had a feeling that that was the one. He had to do it. It was the only way it was going to work. So he's dialed in. He is dialed in. And he has got King 10 off here. The taxi cab folds. Open folds uh, to min rays, Mike. Okay. This is very uh, peculiar stuff. I, I don't know. Very strange, those last two hands. I mean, jam the 10 8 suited and then just fold the king 10 off suited. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I am. Um, that was wild. That was a wild. I get. I, get, I love. Uh, Um, I, I will take, I will, I will, I don't know. I've seen a lot, but that was, that was for sure. Like those were out there a little bit. There's been some very, very fun hands today in general. And right now, Aram is looking, he's trying to, trying to hold on right now. He's in a second place. There, yeah. yeah. He wants to, he wants to get second, I think for sure at this point. Uh, and is definitely not feeling confident about trying to play O swap at all given the stack situation, just deciding to play a little bit more of a preflop game. But it seems like he might be overdoing that adjustment a little bit. Yeah, and Pedro here with the ace, ace three, blinds have gone up. Future of me being going to be very active. Folds the ace three as a short stack. And, you know, I guess you're getting called a fair amount and whatever, but man, I don't know. This is... Uh, it's getting it's getting intense. Future of me, it's going exactly how he wants. The players are shorter and they're playing kind of it's kind of he's kind of separated now to the point where he can really lean. And uh yeah. man, future of me, gotta have the smart money on him at this point with this big of a lead and the way they are the stacks are are drawn up. I mean, if anything, he just wants to get them even a little closer together. But right now he is getting dealt the best hands as in a lot of spots as well. Like here, there's just no defense for for that tens powerful hand. And we are, he's almost up to 19 million chips. And there's some, here we go, queens in the big blind. So Aram finds a finds an important hand, right? He's sort of getting chipped down and yeah. kind of and getting close to Pedro. But... I think he's got a hand that's definitely strong enough that he wants to try to induce some action. But we've seen this time and again that he's just happy to take down these pots, keep his position in second place, and try to outlast Pedro, which, you know, is, it makes sense. But he might be leaving some chips on the table potentially. 
Yep. Well, ace queen, ace jack going to take it down. So we are at 3.56 million. Then, of course, about 18 million for our chip leader. And here he is with 7.5 off. Let's see if he sticks with that 6.25K plan, which seems to be working. And Pedro just not even getting a dealt in in this spot. Like, literally has the worst hands that can that can get given. Yeah, and that's what you're going to see future of me doing that spot is when he's got something really good, he's going to use that two and a half, you know, 625 sizing. When he's got something really garbage, he's going to use that sizing. And then for a lot of the stuff in the middle, he's just going to go all in. Uh, that's most likely going to be his approach, I think. Pedro's found yeah, a well, time. finally, though. Yep, Ace Ten picks it up, so we are officially, officially three-handed, and blinds are at one fifty k, three hundred k now. So it is about that time. And A Ram with Tier One Ace King suited, what a welcome sight for him! All right, guys, when yeah, we get to two fifty, I'm gonna. This one. Yeah, it's, all in again. it's the full enchilada. Full enchilada giveaway is looking like most likely a hundred dollars, but hey, with still some time to see an Ace Three. Best hand here, likely just going to shove. I guess he could. Well, yeah, 300K, it's up now, not on the 625. Kind of best hand, worst hand thing. And then a mediumly type of hand shoving. Pedro, King 3 suited, knows this is going to be the best hand often, but calling off not so fun. And Aram playing a little bit funky in some of these spots. Maybe just thinking he just doesn't want to, he wants to do it on his own terms. But this would, this that's a big fold. I'm a little surprised there. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, I mean, I think he, he wants to call the king three suited, but uh, I think that would be, you know, given the situation, he just has to, he needs a good hand to call. You know, I think it's a little bit too light. He needs to try to wait a few hands, look for a better spot. Maybe Aram, you know, Aram's been just using all in or fold. So if Aram runs into a hand the way he's playing, he could be out of there and Pedro could get the 300K. So you can kind of see that, uh, you know, sometimes a little bit of patience is necessary. Yep, king seven off fold and you know nine ten. This is an uncomfortable one where you're small blind, big blind. You know you're tasting that ninety five k. You limp in. Is future me going to put the pressure on or just keep the flops? Take a flop and see it. As it turns out, nine ten does flop. They both hit the board fairly well. Three seven's got some backdoor situations. Nine ten top pair. See if future me wants to bet sort of small as he does and now. How Aram's been playing, right? It's like kind of a weird one too. I might just see him just go big here, and just take it down. Yeah. Same token, he's I trying to he's play pass. Put it all in. Right. Oh no, he choose a less than all in size. Okay. I think future of me. I mean, maybe he's picked up on something that Aram's playing, but you know he hasn't seen these hands, so he doesn't know. He's going to call which is mm. what you're normally supposed to do with his hand, and now he's hit the turn. I mean, this is probably going to be yes. it. I'd be surprised if Aram didn't go all in here. Oh, no, he didn't go all in yet. Well, well, he's got some cards that could win on the river, a 10, a 4, a 9, but that is not a lot of cards, and future of me just hits hard and goes for a smallish bet here in Aram. This is getting... Getting into dicey waters, right? Like, it's hard to think you don't have the best hand. There are hands that have you in really bad shape. 3-7 has you in pretty bad shape. And actually, so what? There's a four-liner out there. Checks over. And it's a quick check from Aram. Yeah, I guess he will get probably get away from 9-10 now. Uh, I thought future of me, he bet really small on the turn. I'm not sure that was really really their best size, you know, you would have liked to maybe get a little bit more money in because cards like the five or the six or heart or various things that might kill your action can come. Uh, still a nice pickup him though. He extends the chip lead. Maybe he's a little bit of a sadist. Look, he's got them 20 million to three and three. He's got him right on the same. And now he's just going to go to town. You know, maybe that's uh, part of the thinking on their the river. It's like, all right, you know, I tried the best hand. I'm not going to value, but maybe he's not going to call. And like, here we go. Wow. So here is a, very interesting spot. Immediately, we see a difficult decision where Queen King suited. You just can't imagine folding, but they literally are. It's like a game of chicken to go in first. And Aram, I don't know. You think he's mandatorily calling here? I think he's probably got a call. Uh, I mean, if he folded, I wouldn't be completely shocked. But yeah, there we go. He 
does call and he has got a very nice start to the thing. Sorry, he says, scan, he's really, he's, he's pushing the envelope here and oh, uh -oh is a that a, time. oh, oh, the game is so cruel. It looked like, it looked, I mean, that flop was a little too good, right? It was almost just like, how could he possibly be clean? And Aram, he must have seen the GG club promotion the g-man username he's got the he's got the icon there and we are down to head to, this could be over in one second ace four suit is it. in the lead seven eight off and it is good on the flop 75 percent of the time we are gonna have it is it that That's is it. your champion future of me hundred dollars going in the chat to the users and i am going to go ahead and i did roll it already and it is uh our friend here look at that payout uh wow at martin you won $100. So there we go. 538,000 future of me. That's a winner. Mike Watson, what do you think today? I mean, are you impressed? Are you thinking, wow, I got I can never miss the Super Millions? What was the overall level of play? Give me, give me some takeaways from today. Yeah, we saw a great final table, a lot of great players, high level play. Uh, saw some really exciting hands, fun runouts, and uh, you know, some great bluffs. Really had it all. Uh, excited to have been here and uh, hold it with you, Jeff. Amazing. Well, we, we picked the $100 winner. Mike, I owe you a nice dinner, I believe, and Sarah. Is that right? You won, right? I can't, you couldn't even keep track. Did, you did yeah. win. We had, we started had to pile three. up. Yeah. 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 yeah it, was, it wasn't that close, but I appreciate you coming in. Where can people follow you? Social on Twitter, Instagram? Where do you, where do you keep people up with your poker play and, and kind of world travels? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, Sir Watts on Twitter would probably be the main place. Uh, I'm not super active, honestly, on any of the social media. I have an Instagram as well. Um, half the time it's not me posting. That's top secret, but uh, there you go. Uh, that's, that's out there. There's some pictures and stuff too, so yeah. I can tell you what, Mike's a great guy, great player, and appreciate his insight into the game. And for the time, of course, good luck in all the high stakes action you're playing online. And everyone at home, big neck, big guest. Next week, we got my man Beiruzzi coming in on Tuesday. I know a lot of you follow him, watch him as well on socials. And he is he was just at a Super Millions final table recently. So we'll see him next week. Mike, thank you for the time. We'll see everyone. Congrats to the winner in the giveaway. And 500 plus K going to the man from Ireland. So thank you so much, Mike. We'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody.